More dog. Hello and welcome <laughs> to Lore Dump. As you can hear from the two giggling numpties <laughs> next to me, uh, this is pretty much hour seven, hour eight of us covering Kingdom Hearts in one day. Um, we have only reached the third canonical game, uh, Kingdom Hearts 2, um, but we are excited to get into it. Now this is the show- there are 13 games this series. <laughs> This is the show where normally I, Monty Zander, would take a friend of mine who has not experienced a game or game franchise and tell them the full story. However, for this time, uh, I am not a Kingdom Hearts expert, as much as I love to criticise it. Uh, my friend Chase is. So ra Hello. rather than Chase being on the other side of the microphone and listening to the insanity of a game or game franchise, uh, Chase is actually telling myself and my friend Neil the full story. Hello. We're Hello, uh, we are now in Kingdom Hearts 2, and uh, Chase, I'm just going to throw it straight to you. Oh, Let's jump fantastic. into it. Fantastic. I've put at the top of my section here, oh fuck, okay, here we go, Jesus Christ, I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and then, I honestly, that fucking describes where we're going, so without further ado, um... For for a uh, small context, we've we've just shown Neil, uh, Sanctuary, mm. uh, possibly the most iconic opening in the series. Even if Dearly Beloved is possibly a more iconic song, but um, the opening cinematic see fades and we see a beach. Um, I will tell you this beach is technically called the Dark Meridian, um, but I'll be honest, I don't know if that name is ever explicitly given in the series. I think you get it from a glossary or something. It's news to me, and I've played a few of these. Probably get it on a fucking app. <laughs> well, so anyway, this is this is the Dark Meridian. Um, I won't go into any details on it, but a figure in an organization robe uh, appears from a dark portal. The figure walks up to another who tells him that he's been to see him, and that he looks a lot like the first figure. The second figure responds, but noticeably doesn't have a voice. They're doing that kind of no voice but subtitles thing here. Mm -hmm. Uh, sneaky game, giving us a mystery character I've written. Uh, the, in the, inaud the inaudible Roby asks who the other is, to which they respond that they are what's left, or maybe all that ever was. The audible one then asks if the silent one remembers their true name. They attempt to remember it, and it fades to a static-filled memory from Kingdom Hearts 1, with Kyrie seemingly answering the question with Sora. It shows the events at the start of Kingdom Hearts 1 leading to the Lost of Destiny Islands, but the scene is covered in static and keeps skipping, almost like a corrupted V test tape. As the scene changes, we find ourselves in... a bedroom. In Twilight Town. And the new boy from the opening cutscene is waking up. Look at your face, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, so, we don't play a Sora in this game. We're a new boy. Huh. Uh-huh. We're a new boy. We're a new it's, boy. it's Metal Gear... Solid two does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sora's having a nap in his pod, so we're playing as a new boy. Uh, oh. Mm. He he comments on how he was having another dream about him, presumably meaning Sora, and we learn that this boy is Roxas. Another X name? Mm -hmm. Interesting. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Uh, I mean, he's Roxas is rocking... Um, slightly smaller shoes. Um, he, he's got similar, uh, like, weird waders to Rico. Yeah. I don't know what's up with waders in the fashion of these early Kingdom Hearts games. Yeah, and a sort of, um, yeah, sorry. Neil, I'm not going to tell you much more about this for obvious reasons, but Roxas is my favourite character in Kingdom Hearts. Okay. Um, and I think that I and might not be alone I, in that. As much as I disagree with most of Monty's takes on this series, mm. uh... And I don't necessarily agree on this one. I fully understand why, and yeah. it is definitely a very common opinion in the fan base. Yeah, cool. yeah, I'm definitely not um, doing that. Roxas is a stellar character. Mm. Cool. So <clears throat> we see the boy get out of bed, and later we see him along with those other kids from the Chain of Memories post-credit scenes in a room. They're talking about a guy called Cypher who's been, oh, been going around blaming them for things that have been going missing around Twilight Town. Oh, fucking Cypher. What's he like? Oh. Cypher. So why is one of them wearing a sort of <laughs> snood with Dog Street written on it? Dog Street's cool, man. You know what means a Dog Street? Dog Street's the brand. That is the brand How do you know? How do you know it's not an actual street? Like, oh, yes, it's the, yeah, it's like the Nike. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, but no, Cypher's been going around saying that they've been uh, blaming... 
blaming them for things going missing in Twilight Towns. And we got a mystery on our hands. We got to clear our names. We got to Scooby Doo this shit. Something's missing, man. What is it? Oh. <laughs> One then shouts that they're are gone. Well, they're what? Sorry, they're what? They're are gone. Oh, oh weird. Dude. I know. While clutching a camera. Given the camera, we can cr- kind of infer that he's trying to say the word photos, but for some reason he's not able to say it. Oh. Uh, and in fact, none of them can. They all try to say the word photos and it just comes out blank every single time they try. Um, and it seems that it wasn't only the physical photos that were stolen, but somehow the word photo as well. Mm, mm. Okay. Uh, as they run out to find the thief, the boy collapses and blacks out. In the black, we have Christopher Lee's smooth, oh, buttery voice oh. saying how his heart is returning and he'll awaken soon. Good Christopher Lee. I appreciate that. Well okay, done. Yeah. Uh, Roxas and gang go to... See, that's, that's what it kind of does every time they try to say photos. Uh, so Roxas and gang go to c- confront Cypher. He's the town bully for stealing them, but he tries to accuse them. And also funniest line of the entire series where he walks up to them uh saying something about uh them stealing photos as proof that this is undeniable proof that we totally owned you lamers <laughs> lamers <laughs> it's the oh. most mid 2000s dialogue that comes out of cypher i don't think yeah. it is um <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10 would I bully bet. again <laughs> <laughs> When the bullies used to say that to us. Oh, all the time, yeah. Uh, you fight Cypher, and after winning, Pence takes a victory photo of you. But the second he does, the photo is snatched up. The what? By... The photo. The photo. The what? I... Sorry, the... the... It's <laughs> snatched up by a slithery white Shark. boy. It's a shark boy. It's just, like, he's a slithery... No, That's actually it's, a zipper. It's a zipper. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's such a kinky universe. What is it? <laughs> it's a zipper, and you can, you can kind of see that this this is like a weird latex outfit that is surrounding... You can kind of see a head inside it that's just like a black head. And mm. this is kind of a hood, sort of. Okay. Uh, Look at that insignia. It looks like a dick and balls. God damn it, Monty. <laughs> um, but, so, this is, uh, this is, we're gonna call him Slithery Boy. Okay. And... How does Slithery Boy pick up anything with those hands or well, walk he, with those... He, he just comes by, and they, and they like, when I say Slithers, they, they do, like, weird backflips. Like, they woo all yeah. around. They're like contortionists. And he grabs it, and he just whoops away. You chase after the figure, and it leads you through a crack in the wall of Twilight Town, and you find yourself at... The old mansion from Chain of Memories. Oh. Oh. Mm. You try to fight the creature with your toy sword, uh, because they they all take place in this like they all they all play in this like martial arts contest called Strife, and it's literally just like swords, sword fighting. They all have blue toy foam swords. <laughs> um so you try to fight them all with your phone sword, um, but you're unable to do any damage. Uh giving parallels back to Kingwards One and Sword trying to with the wooden sword, uh Beat off the Heartless. However, mid-battle, your sword suddenly changes into a large key, and your attacks actually do damage. Gasp. Defeating the the creature, the keyblade disappears. In, like, a bizarrely kind of data-scapey way, like, normally it just kind of poofs from existence. This time, it's like you get weird, like, data particles around it, and it kind of, like, blips from existence, if you know what I'm trying to mean. Okay, Um... And, it, and the missing photos are left behind in the creature's place. Back at the gang's hideout, the Twilight kids are looking at the photos and seemingly notice that all the stolen photos from the town share a defining trait. They all feature Roxas. Hmm. As they leave the hideout, Roxas is blinded by the sun, causing the screen to go black, and we hear him ask, Where am... Who's there? Who are you? Before the stream, screen goes to static, and a data voice says, Restoration at 12%. Oh, yeah. What's happening? What the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah. The scene shifts to Diz and Aerobi at what looks to be a multi screened computer. So, computers are now a thing in the canon city. Don't talk to me about Ansem. <laughs> <laughs> um, Diz says how the organization has found us, to which Roby asks what nobody's want with a bunch of pictures. Diz replies that the fools can't tell the difference, seemingly implying that. It was Roxas themselves they were trying to capture, but they saw Roxas in a picture, and they're like, "Oh, that's that's the Roxas. That's what we need to get." So not not the smartest tools in the shed, right. but you know, uh, it continues on to say that they're running out of time and that Nominee must hurry and complete the restoration. 
That night, Roxas again dreams of Sora and his Kingdom Hearts 1 journeys, again filled with static. And in this dream, we, he recognizes the Keyblade and learns that it's called a Keyblade. Uh, <laughs> Does he get a Keyblade by this point, no? So he, he's, he's fought with the Keyblade once. Right, Does he, it, doesn't it, it, it he doesn't have it on his person. He doesn't have it on his person. He, he doesn't know it. how to summon it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I don't remember the particulars of this. I love this game, but it's, <laughs> it's yeah, it's the one I, yeah. On Roxas's way into the gang's hideout, he notices a Rowie watching him, but he kind of goes to approach him and they walk away. In the hideout, the gang enjoys delicious sea salt ice cream. They question if they're going to always be together, shaken by the memory thief, and decide to make the most of the remainder of their summer vacation. To do that, they're going to the beach. But in order to do that, they need to win some money. There's a local strife tournament, and they decide they're gonna that they're going to split the prize. They also go out and you spend like the next two days doing part-time jobs like flyering and oh, hitting yay. and hitting a cart up a hill. Mm. Um and skateboarding. That's the best. <laughs> skateboarding, that is a yeah. that is one for some reason. So after doing all that, the gang meets at the up at the train station to meet up at the train station to get tickets. They rush in, but Roxas trips. <laughs> sure. Sure, uh, over his big feet. He's held... Oh. I guess we were in fucking size 15s. <laughs> he's pulled up from the ground by Roby, who asks Roxas if he can feel Sora. Are we meant to know who the Roby is? No. No, it's just a random organization person, potentially. It's a Roby. Cool. Uh, Roxas, well, I mean, at this point, we can't even say that Roby's... Because oh, people, uh, anyone's wearing the clothes, now, right? there's yeah. more people. Mm. Uh, presumably we can kind of infer by the fact that Diz is there. Right. But... Yeah, the, we knew that the, the, we knew we got the numbers 11 and 4 last time, and 5 of the 6 introduced are dead from that last one. So if we assume there's like 11 or more... That's, uh, that's sensible, yeah, I think that's solid, yeah. Yeah, yeah so... Uh, Roxas uh, tries to look at him, but by the time that Roxas looks around, Roby's gone. Cool. They go to get the tickets, and Roxas realizes that the money is gone. Uh, his, his wallet's been, been nicked off him. And he thinks Roby stole it, but nobody else saw Roby. Uh, thinking that he kind of just fell on his own. Uh, they miss the train, and instead head to the top of the clock tower with some sea salt ice cream to hang out. The top of that clock tower is such an iconic location in this franchise. It is so behemothly reoccurring. Uh, to the point where s some of the games practically take place almost entirely on the clock tower. Um, can I, can uh, I, can I uh, very quickly, can I ask a question? Yeah. And I, I just might be forgetting. I am forgetting. Why was uh, why was Twilight Town introduced as a memory world in the last game? What was the, do we know why? So, yeah, because nobody had Vexen, gone there before. Vexen had pulled the memories from what he quoted as the other side of Sora's heart. Right. Uh, so, so Twilight what, Town is very much a real place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, but what I mean is we're not supposed to know yet or why, why it was, it was there. Yeah. yeah, okay. Exactly, cool. exactly. Yeah, so Roxas thinks from the line that Roby fed him and the screen fades to static. We hear Diz say, nominee, hurry. Nominee, hurry. Yes. Oh, yes. we love. Uh, back in the computer room with Diz and Roby, Roby's tossing the kid's wallet to himself. What a fucking thief. Just kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> so he's able to pull items... Like, he's nicking items from Roxas, and he's like, oh, Diz, look at the thing I got, this Ruby guy. Yeah. He's able to, like, just have them and, and be walking about with them. Why would he not? Well, it's just weird that he's just nicking items from Roxas and bringing them back to Diz, being like, look what I got. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this kid's ten bucks. <laughs> you were supposed to bring the kid. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, man? You were supposed to bring the child. <laughs> uh... Roby asks Diz if it's really that hard to make a beach. To which Diz tells him that they'd be giving the enemy another entry point. Uh, <laughs> Diz tells Roby to delete the bag of money, saying that items from that world must be kept out of the real world. Aight? Uh, again, we see a static-filled dream of Sora's Kingdom Hearts 1 adventures before coming in to nominate in front of Sora's pod. The scene fades to black, leaving only nominate as we hear Roxas ask who she is. Roxas wakes up to day three. I think I forgot to say, this is the last week of summer vacation. No. So we play through the last summer, seven days of summer vacation. Go go back to school soon, you know? It's yeah. Be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so at the hideout, Roxas finds a note from Hayner to meet at the station. When he meets his friends on the way, though, time freezes and Nominee appears. Mm. Kind of out of a portal. 
for some fucking reason. She tells him that she wanted to meet him at least once before walking off and time on freezes. Roxas chases Useful. That was, a, that was a useful she, conversation. She Thanks, Namini. I mean, she just wanted to meet him, man. She just wanted I just want to meet you. Okay, bye. <laughs> Roxas chases after Namini and winds up in the woods outside Twilight Town near the mansion where he's attacked by the slithery boys oh. coming out of the dark portals. Uh, although I will note that these are notably different from the corridors of darkness that we see in Kingdom Hearts 1. Like, these have, like, a white outline. So... Okay. It's, like, black and white, sort of. Well, it's not white. It's more like black. It's more like Twilight, so to speak. Cool. Uh, In that we can kind of imply that these aren't inherently creatures of darkness like the Heartless were. Uh, He runs to the Strife field where the creatures go attack Cypher and his friends. Roxas doesn't know what he's going to do, but suddenly hears Nominee call to him from a rooftop to use the Keyblade, uh, which he does, and big fight. Defeated, the creatures burst into a ball of darkness, threatening to swallow Roxas. But he's rescued by Nomine, who introduces herself to Roxas once more. Or for the first time, rather. <laughs> she goes to tell him something, but is abruptly stopped by Roby, who tells her not to say anything. Roby summons a dark portal and pushes Roxas through and out of the room. What a dick. What a dick. Uh, Roxas wakes up, back in the lot with Cypher's gang. Hayner and the others see him there and storm off. Hayner's not happy. You're hanging with the enemy, bro. Yeah, hanging out with Cypher. He called his lamers. <laughs> he called his lamers, It's man. like the ultimate... Unforgiveness. It's the ultimate diss. The ultimate diz. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I hate, uh, hate it. <laughs> I have a question about sea salt ice cream. Have you tasted sea salt ice cream? Yes, it's really good. Is it? It's really good. Really I can just imagine it tastes like salty water. Anything sweet with... No, because it's cream and, and sugar mm-hmm. and... But with See, salt, it's it's anything like that tastes amazing. It's, what, it's, it's like, like it's like having salted seriously. caramel. Yeah, okay. yeah, s- similar concept. It's great. Cool. The salt okay. brings out the sweet. It's great. Is that real ice cream before Kingdom Hearts, yes. or is it? Is it? Mm-hmm. Is it like a Japanese like thing that they sell? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe I've seen it in the states mm. at least. Um, sure. <laughs> granted, not in like these weird blue lollipop forms. Mm. Um, I've seen it just as ice cream mm. in like a cup but um cool anyhow uh, the screen stays stephatic stays stephatic fades to static <laughs> and we hear restoration complete 48% back in that computer room Roby's asking Diz if nominate was made of data if the nominate excuse me was made of data but Diz responds that no nominate hijacked the data and he couldn't get control of her but as long as Nominee accomplishes her goal, what happens to Roxas doesn't matter. Okay. I'm so lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so okay. Neil, I, I'm Neil what do you think? Lost, think? Yeah, but what do you think is happening right now? Serious what, question. With the progression thing. Just generally, what, what have we experienced well, so far in Kingdom Hearts 2? What's going on? I mean, I can tell you what, what, what's been happening from like their perspective, the kids' perspective. It's the other stuff that I'm like, the progression... Like, I assume that's to do with him being in the pod, like, regenerating. Like, that's the progression bar. That's all I can think of is happening. Well, Sora being in the Yeah, pod. that being, like, but Ro- what she's working we're, on. We're working with a new character here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that. But, like, what was Namine working on? Was she not, like... Right. She had she had Sora in the pod, right? Last time we saw them. Cool. Um, but I have no idea what's happening back well, there. Well, restorations are 40% complete. We're 40% of the way through Kingdom Hearts 2, so 48% of the way through yeah, Kingdom Hearts 2. We're, we're fine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. Uh, anyway, uh, we see another staticky dream. This time, the memories of Hollow Bastion. Roxas wakes up remembering a promise. Mm. Day four, you head to the Sandlot for the Strife Tournament, where you meet up with Hainer. After defeating him, you... Oh, where you make up with Hayner, excuse me. Oh, yeah, don't um, defeat him, okay. Yeah, you make up oh, with is, is he is is he having um what's his name's memories put into him? Roxas. Yeah. Is Roxas having um thingy's memories put into him? Okay, so you make up with Hayner at the Strife tournament and start the tournament. Uh you face him in the first round, kick his ass, then you face uh then you you presume that you're gonna face Strifer next, time freezes, and Roby approaches you, clapping to a to congratulate you on their fight. Uh, or excuse me, a Roby approaches you, clapping to congratulate you on your fight. He asks Roby, who really doesn't remember, and reveals that 
It's Axel. <sighs> yeah, I, 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 I had a wee guess at it being Axel. Did you? Oh, yeah. fair enough. Did uh, you? Yeah, or was it... Well, there's only one robed figure alive from Chain of Memories. Oh, that's <laughs> that makes sense, what yeah. Was... Well, no. The Keyblade... Um, is it the same Keyblade? Well, Sora's, yes. Is it Sora's is, Keyblade? It is Sora's Kingdom Key. Right, so we know that Sora's Kingdom Key was like a wizard wand. It, it, it was drawn to his heart, whatever. So I'm thinking there's some shit going on with... <laughs> Uh, our new protagonist getting Sora's heart put him in a, put in him or something. Okay, interesting. Okay. Um, Roxas doesn't recognize him at all mm. and asks what's going on, but Axel tells him that the town is his creation and they don't have time for Q and A. He tells him that Roxas is coming with him, conscious or not. Yeah. They go to fight, but the world distorts around Ox. Roxas. Roxas, alarming Axel. Roxas throws the Keyblade away, wanting to know what's going on, only for it to flash back in his hand. Can't fucking escape destiny, buddy. Mm -hmm. Axel calls him number 13, Roxas, the Keyblade's chosen one. Uh, You fight Axel, but are interrupted by Diz. Diz tells Roxas that Axel spout an utter shite. (laughs) But Axel is like, nah fam, don't believe Diz. He's deceiving you. Uh, and Roxas calls out to his friends in frustration and time somehow restores itself to normal. If I had like one emotion to summarize Roxas, it's frustration. Like I'm doing a poor job describing it here, but you get like Axel on one side and Diz on the other. And it gets to the point where it's like Roxas, 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 until he like shouts out to his friends in like almost pain. Mm. Which is funny because Sora is just, I'm going <laughs> to smile for my friends all the time. And yeah. like, it's one of the reasons why like I really enjoy watching Roxas because he's the only real character in Kingdom Hearts that sh- like actively gets upset and angry and annoyed by things so quite correct. Al- no, no, I know other characters no, do. No, 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 I know. But like by this point, you've been oh. playing as Sora and Sora's like, I that's will save fair. the day. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, Roxas yeah, gets upset a lot. Yeah. To be fair, this is the game that started introducing emotions into <laughs> <Yeah>. the series. <laughs> Did you know that characters can have emotion? <laughs> um, so anyhow, you take down Cypher and win the belt and trophy. Up on the clock tower with your friends, uh, you kind of rip, there's like metal, or there's like little glass orbs in like four colors in the trophy you just rip them off you trash the trophy and you give each of your friends one of the little glass orbs yeah fuck that trophy cute I know it is cute they're like sharing the prize just like they said they were going to share the money to go to the beach he goes to stand up and uh loses his footing and falls off the tower <laughs> imagine you're his pals you know what we're sharing this trophy together Anyway, I'm off. <laughs> uh, Rox is not. <laughs> so yeah, he, he falls off the tower, and as he's falling towards the ground to splat, we see the screen go static. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you don't want to show that. Yeah, dead, did it? <laughs> as the static fades, we see a girl walking down a garden path. It's Kyrie. Hey. She's on her way home from school. Oh my god! Hey. All the characters go to school in this game. It's really weird, man. Where has she been? Where, where is she at this point? She's on the main island. This is the one time you see the main island of Destiny Islands. Oh, is that where she is? Yeah. Oh she's my on the, god. She's on the main right. island. And you can see her like walking. There's like houses everywhere. It's like a beach town. <clears throat> okay. Fair on her b- bothering to go back to school after everything that happened. Well, well. Uh, so her friend asks Kyrie if she wants to go to the island, kind of implying Destiny Island, um, which Kyrie declines. Kyrie asks if uh, her if she remembers the boys they used to hang out with. To which the girl replies, "Riku, I wonder whatever happened to him." Oh, uh, Kyrie. Rem- Kyrie asks if she remembers the other boy, but the girl doesn't remember there being another. Oh. Kyrie remembers that there was another boy, but she can't remember his face or his name. Oh. She decides she won't go back to the island they played on until she remembers everything about him. Oh, cute. Like Kyrie like, uh, makes a single choice. Like, Mar- I know. <laughs> like, like Marluxia said in the last game, you start losing memories and you stop existing. Yeah. I know. Um, so we see Kyrie hear Roxas' voice in her head asking, Nomine? She grips her head in pain and the screen goes static, returning to Roxas, falling from the tower. He asks Namine what's happening to him, but we hear Kyrie's voice responding back in his head, asking if who he is, and saying how Namine isn't her name. She introduces herself to Roxas, 
We love. We love this like conversation. He's like falling towards the ground to his death. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he's having this like cool, calm conversation with Kyrie. She introduces herself, to which Roxas responds that he knows her. She's the girl that he likes. Who does he say this to? Sorry, Kyrie. Kyrie. Yeah, he says this to Kyrie. Right. Okay. Who's like speaking to him in his mind. Right. As he's falling off. As he's falling the- off a building, <laughs> uh, she frantically asks him for a name, to which he gives her his. <laughs> Uh, what's his name Roxas <laughs> she corrects uh, that she wants the boy's name to which for the first time in the game we hear Sora's voice respond in a teasing tone with you don't remember my name thanks a lot Kyrie. I'll give you a hint it starts with an S Sora in with a sass <laughs> Sora's lost about 10 points there for me yeah. <laughs> You remember my name, you fucking... By, I saved your way, life. To be fair, it's, it a, is so it's, out, a... it's out of ten, by the way. <laughs> yeah. The maximum point. To be, to be fair, Sora's... He's, he's more playful than sass. Yeah. Uh, but... I just think, like, he's been sitting there for two years thinking about... What am I going to say? you got to nail this. you got to nail this, Sora. you got to nail this. Well, I'll give you a clue. <laughs> Shit. That sounded so good in the pod. I ran it in the pod and it sounded so good. <laughs> Oh, uh, as Roxas nears the ground, the screen goes black to, uh, it goes back to Kyrie, who's now also on the ground. Her friend helps her up. I'll also say, this friend is one of the three other randos from Destiny Island in the first game. It's like the one girl from Destiny Island in the first game. <laughs> Not that that matters, but continuity. Um, her friend helps her up and Kyrie looks out of the open at the island, hopeful, which this is the bit where we see like a zoom out shot and we see that Destiny Island is literally like maybe 200 meters away from the main island. Need to build that raft. Like, to the point where I doubt that it is even deep water between them. It's probably like a sandbar. Yeah, 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 you can yeah, probably yeah, yeah, yeah. walk from the island to the main island. She runs towards the beach and stops at the water's edge. She pulls a message in a bottle out and puts it in the water. She tells her friend that it's a letter she wrote to the boy she couldn't remember that, uh, that she'd find him. She recalls her promise... Uh, saying Sora's name and the screen goes to static. Restoration at 79%. Okay. Intense. We see Diz and Roby. Fucking look at that mummy, man. I hate him. So is this all one cutscene that's happening over... Oh, no, no, no. This is is a week of gameplay. This is not... This hasn't been cut. This has been a week of gameplay where yeah, you are because I got out. Yeah, I got the gameplay stuff earlier. It's just it feels like we've been in quite a long cutscene for the last few minutes at least. You know. Oh yeah. yes, 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 yes. This yeah. has been a, this has been a cutscene since they went up to the clock tower to yeah, cool. celebrate you. with the trophy. We are still in a cutscene, and we see Diz and Roby. Roby now tossing Roxas's trophy orb to himself. Fucking little thief. Nicking stuff from Roxas. It's I know. A, yeah. uh, as Diz says, how the progress is astounding. He says that Roxas's meeting nominee put his heart in contact with Kyrie. And this, in turn, affected Sora. Ha. Huh. Diz goes on to say that Nominate isn't like other nobodies. That she can interfere with the hearts and memory of Sora and those aligned with him. Which is why he was able to mess with... Because you asked, why can't he mess with Marluxia? Mm. Because Marluxia isn't aligned to Sora's heart. Whereas, like, Donald and Goofy are. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Every so often. I forget that... Donald Duck and Goofy the dog are about to come back into this. We're like in this very serious this is Japanese anime. And we so often I forget. And then Goofy comes in. <laughs> is it ever explained how, like, why Namini has developed the ability to yes. fuck with people's memories? Okay. Yes. And we don't know that at this point. Cool, cool, okay. Um, uh, Roby asks who's nobody she is, to which respond. Diz responds that he could tell him, but Diz wants to know Roby's true name first. <gasps> Roby pulls back to his hood to reveal, it's Ansem back again. Oh yay! <laughs> back, yay. yay. He's back again. <laughs> You'd almost imagine that this sets him up to be the main antagonist of the series. <laughs> Diz laughs, saying how it's an honor to meet him. He's got the the durability of <laughs> Albert Wesker, like. It's no, no. <laughs> Albert, Albert Wesker, shockingly, I would argue, makes more sense than Ansem. Uh, and that I say that v- knowing full well how ridiculous Albert I, I Wesker think, is. I think, uh, that yeah. they, I think they're about the same. One of them is 
Or back because virus, and this is like back because heart magic. Look, I think we all know who would be the dom in that relationship, and it would be Wesker. So it's Wesker. They're both doms who constantly butt heads over it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Switch, uh, switches. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Switches, yeah. So the scene shifts to the circle of tall chairs from the other Chain of Memories post credit scene. Several have robies on them, including Axel. Imagine that, like, 80% of these characters... Imagine that everybody that we've not seen in Chain it's of Memories hooded. is hooded. <laughs> yeah, this is an out-of-context picture. But Axel is there. He's there. Yeah. I mean, At that meeting. The, the, yeah. Do they not know at this point that he's essentially sort of betrayed them? They and... do not. Okay, cool. He's, 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 still, he's still living low. Because um, that all happened in the castle. This and if true. everybody else is and dead, everyone else died. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Although he did... He did just have a fight in front, and Diz was there, and he went, Diz is lying to you. So, uh, Axel's saying how it's too soon to get rid of him. A hooded Roby asks why Axel hesitates in carrying out the order he's been so ruth- when he's been so ruthless towards other traitor organization members. Axel argues that he didn't betray them. The figure in the tallest chair summons a ball of light pointed at Axel. Axel asks if he's going to turn him into a dusk before finally relenting, saying he'll do it. Turn him into a what? Dusk. That's uh, the official name of the Slytherin. More place. nighttime oh, stuff. Okay. Day night stuff. I can I just very po- po- pause very quickly. So listeners, we've got a picture of the their sort of throne room of them and their various chairs. How does the central figure get up there? I just love the idea that he has to arrive ten minutes early for the meeting to climb a ladder oh, behind man. that. Like... Well, I can tell you that at least he he can fly. Well, even the others, they're still fifteen feet. I feel like I didn't. I feel like I didn't mention things like the fact that Sora can fly. I didn't know Sora could fly. Sora can fly. Yeah, he flies uh, in Neverland. I remember lots that. of people can fly yeah. in the series. Okay. Uh, and most of the rest of them can just jump really tall. I just love that you felt that you know coming into the building and <laughs> going, can we, I know, I know, I know this is like day five and we come and I make it just another five feet. Can we get another <laughs> five feet on there? I really feel like I need to be <laughs> just... But also simultaneously, I will say, the majority of them just kind of portal onto their chairs. And portal off of their chairs. I mean, that's what I would do. So yeah. ridiculous. You can it's teleport. You're going to teleport. <laughs> um. So Roxas wakes up day five, saying uh, he was dreaming, but which parts of it were the dream? Back in the hideout, the kids are deciding what to uh, deciding to do their summer homework that they left till the last minute. Mm. Kids, am I right? Mm. Um. Summer homework for nerds. <laughs> Dick thing Roxas, asks, children. Roxas asks them if he fell off the clock tower but no one remembers it Oh. they decide for their summer assignment they'll research the seven wonders of twilight town local spooky stories like the endless stairs or the wailing from the sewers ooh uh, uh, uh. uh <laughs> so you spend the whole of that day uh, exploring these. Most of them appear to be similar to like glitches in the Matrix, for lack of a better term. Oh, so they are a, a thing that you uh, can see. Balls flying out of the wall, duplicating beams. Balls flying out of a wall. Balls flying out of a wall. Yeah. It's got a glory hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, duplicating beams. Uh, while exploring numbers one through six, uh, the one that I, I do feel a need to note is the ghost train. Oh, that is the cutest ghost train. That's, this is, is definitely run by someone from Disney. This is not. This is this is the Disney monorail. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the yeah. Disneyland monorail. Uh, this one is a train with no one on it that leads to nowhere, which can be seen at sunset from Sunset Hill. Uh, however, when they go to see it, Rox is the only one who's able to see the train. Uh, with his friends neither uh, confirming nor denying that they ever saw it themselves. Ooh. I feel like they should just straight up deny it if we're trying to build the mystery that Roxas just sees it. Like, why make it like, I don't know, oh, maybe I saw a train. Oh, I'm not going to tell you, Roxas. <laughs> well, you're a prick. <laughs> <laughs> as you're exploring, Hainer begins to get frustrated with you. as Because w- what I also have to mention is this isn't just this one. This is pretty much all of them. Only Roxas seems to be seeing these glitches in the Matrix. Mm-hmm. Everybody else is like, uh, like, for example, the balls that fly out of the wall. Um, Pence comes by later. I don't think I ever mentioned. Their names are Hainer, Pence, and Ouellette. Pence is in there, is he? <clears throat> uh, yeah, Pence. Uh, good old Mikey boy. Good old Mikey. <laughs> um, yeah, was it? Like, Hainer's, the, Hainer's the pal, Pence is the smart one, and Ouellette is there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Ouellette, oh, Ouellette is there. Yeah, no, it's another female Here character that's honestly just about. 
Uh, um, but yeah. At least she has more personality than Kyrie. I would agree, yeah. Um, and she does do more than Kyrie in the course of the series, to be fair. Um, this is kind of a running theme. Uh, like, for example, the, with the ball on the wall, um, by the time you've dealt with it and paint, Pence comes out to see the last ball, he looks in to see Roxas and goes, Roxas, did you throw that ball? Oh my gosh, that explains the mystery. Yeah. As if the whole mystery that's been like, this urban legend in the town has <laughs> always been, years. Years. <laughs> has been like Roxas for years just oh, throwing yeah. the ball. It was my 11-year-old friend. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> my granddad saw you do that 20 years ago, Roxas. <laughs> so that kind of just happens for every single one. And over time, Hayner... Who, like, gets annoyed at you a lot, man. Mm. But he gets frustrated at you because only Roxas seems to be able to see the wonders. And Hayner thinks that he's messing with him. He storms off, leaving Roxas to go alone to find the seventh wonder, the lonely girl. Ooh. Ooh. I wonder who that is. Uh, headed to the mansion, Roxas sees Namine in the window, who seemingly hey. summons his consciousness into her room. This is her room in the mansion. Oh. Look, it's her drawings. Oh. Where's, uh, where's Minnie Mouse there? Oh, because Minnie's the queen of Disney Castle. Oh, right. King we Minnie, missed King that. Mickey. Yeah, yeah, yeah we did not get that. She, she's married to Mickey, of course. Yeah, well, she, she's you'll, had, see, you'll see her in this game. Don't worry. She's had 30 seconds of screen time so far, to be okay, fair. Okay, cool. Yeah, yes. I wonder where Mickey is. <laughs> oh, right, she's, yeah, she's in, like, yeah. the opening cutscene of Kingdom Hearts 1. Yeah. Um, so she she summons, like, his consciousness into her room um, uh, and brings her attention to a picture of him uh, seemingly with Axel. In long black coats. Both of them in long coats. Mamade tells him how he was best friends with Axel. He thinks that they're joking. And she asks him if he wants to know the truth. Roxas thinks that no one knows him better than himself. But notes that things have been weird lately. And that's an understatement. Yeah. Uh, she brings his attention to a picture of Sora, Donald, and Goofy. Who he recognizes. Mamade tells him that a year ago the ch events of Chain of Memories happened. And that she's almost done repairing Sora's memories but the process has been also affecting Roxas. In order for Sora to become whole again, she tells him that Sora needs him. Roxas tells her that it's funny, and that suddenly he feels like he doesn't know himself at all. He asks Naminé if she's... What she, eh, what she knows about him, to which she tells him that we were never supposed to exist. Oh. That's pretty. That's a pretty grim thing to tell somebody. Well, yeah, because he, he's offended she says that. Yeah. Uh, so she apologizes for bringing it up. And yeets uh, him back to his body outside the mansion. <laughs> She's like, oh, shit. So bad, bad idea. Bye. Uh, you meet up with Roxas's friends atop the tower where they remind themselves that tomorrow's the fair. As well as the last day of summer vacation. Oh, no. They're going to have to go back to school. And then the game will be over. I know. <laughs> Unless it's a school time drama. Oh, Danganronpa. <laughs> school day... <laughs> Did Can't he imagine. just spoil the next Lord Dump? <laughs> Lord Dump Dengen Rumpa? No, thank you. <laughs> da, 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 da. Um, <laughs> the scene shifts to Diz and Ansem. Ansem asks Diz why he made a ghost train for Roxas to see. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird thing to ask someone. <laughs> why did, and why did it look why did like you that? summon this ghost Diz, train? Why did it look like that? <laughs> Diz asks Ansem if the holes in his memory are starting to fill in, which he confirms. It seems the haze on everyone who had ties to Sora's memories are starting to clear. Ansem asks Diz what he really wants, to which Diz replies, Revenge. For the finishing touches, they must first dispose of Naminé now that she's completed her work on Sora. Roxas, he says, was not the only one who was never meant to exist. Diz tells Ansem to take care of it. Cut to stat static. Restoration at 97%. Ooh. Gotta love this. Uh, again, Roxas dreams, uh, this time of the end of Kingdom Hearts 1, the final world in the fight against Ansem, Seeker of Darkness, um, all the way through arriving at Castle Oblivion. The scene changes to the start of this game with the two robes on the beach. Again, the silent one asks, who are you? This time speaking in Roxas's voice. <gasps> the scene shifts to a man in a robe in a city of skyscrapers, he wields two keyblades, one of dark and one of light, Oathkeeper and Oblivion. Fuck. They are the two single coolest keyblades in the game, and I love them. That's awesome. You get Oathkeeper for beating Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh, you get Oblivion if you beat it on the hardest difficulty, and it is hard as balls. Mm. Um, <laughs> he strikes the Heartless around him down and looks at the top of the skyscraper where we see a robed Riku wearing a blindfold. 
The dual wielder runs up the side of the building and throws Oblivion, which Riku catches. They fall to the ground in battle, the hooded man eventually knocking Riku to the ground. Riku asks why he has the Keyblade, and in Roxas's voice, the hooded figure shouts, Shut up, as he slashes against Riku. What's happening? Roxas wakes up and swings his feet out of bed. For a moment, his appearance shifts into Sora before fading back to himself. The sixth day. In the hideout, Roxas approaches his friends, but they can't hear him. He reaches out and his hand passes through them. They run out, ghosting through him, which seems to be a weird theme in every single one of these games. Mm. For various reasons that are do not, are not thematically consistent. Careful you don't leave your heart behind this time, one of you. Yeah. I can tell you they do not. This is just a weird thematic inconsistency. They are just... <laughs> Whoops, my heart! Oh, oh, it's fine. Look after <laughs> it. Give me that bite, you scamp. <laughs> Leaving Roxas alone, he looks at the picture they took earlier in the week at the mansion and notices that he's no longer in it. Leaving their hideout, he's summoned by... He's surrounded by Axel and the Dusks. He tells Roxas that he can either come back with him or be destroyed. Time freezes and Roxas hears Diz's voice summoning him to the mansion, telling him that the time has come. He runs off and as time returns, Axel says that the Roxas he knew is long gone, leaving. At the mansion, Roxas enters the gate and as he does, a hooded Roby... Is Roxas the, um, the, the sort of villain behind it all in the last game, maybe? It's a good theory. Interesting, okay. Our, our sort of mystery man behind the scenes in the last game. The, uh... The superior. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Um... At the mansion, Roxas enters the gate, and as he does, a hooded Roby with Riku's sword appears to hold off the dusks behind him <clears throat> Um, as the gate closes. In the mansion, Roxas makes it to Nomine's room and pauses at a picture of him walking through a city. Pain floods his head as he recalls a memory of him in an organization robe walking through the city that we saw him fighting in before. In this memory, Axel asks, asks him if his mind is made up. Roxas questions why the Keyblade chose him, saying he has to know. Axel tells him that he can't turn on the organization. Roxas in the present recalls the name Organization 13, saying that they're a bad group. Gasp. Ooh, bad people. Nominee appears saying she doesn't know if they're good or bad. They're simply a group of incomplete people wanting to be whole. To make themselves whole, they're desperately searching for Kingdom Hearts. Roxas asks what's go going to happen to him now. <laughs> oh, God, I'm glad you had this. Uh, she begins to answer, but is stopped as she turns into pixels and is teleported away. Disappears, telling him that no knowledge will change his fate. A nobody has no right to know, nor the night to be. Roxas asks what a nobody is. Ansem appears, telling Diz that there are too many nobodies and that they're out of time. Nomine reappears through a dark portal and tells him that the nobodies are like that nobodies like them are only half a person, that he isn't going to disappear, but will instead become whole. Diz stops her from saying anything else, but she forces out that they'll meet again, even if they don't know it's each other. Diz takes her away, leaving Roxas alone in the room. Exploring further into the mansion, Roxas finds the basement hidden beneath the library. In it is the computer room we've seen Diz in. Seeing the computer brings on another burst of pain and more memories. Roxas sees the circle of chairs. Uh, all now, now all full by various organization members, some who we recognize such as Lexius, Marluxia, Larxene, Axel, Vexen, and Zexion are unhooded, whilst the others wear their hoods. In the final chair, as it's kind of like going around this circle, it ends on Roxas. Next, we see Roxas running through the streets, being chased by Dusks. The scene changes again to Riku asking why Roxas has the Keyblade. We see that Riku was able to deflect Roxas's final slash, knocking him back and out. And at this time, Riku captures Roxas. We see Diz and Ansem... Oh my god, we're so close. <laughs> we see Diz and Ansem discussing that if they can maintain the simulated town until Nomine finishes with Sora, they can hold off Roxas. He holds half of Sora's power with him, within him, and will have to give it to him. They'll keep him in the simulated Twilight Town with a new personality to keep him safe from Organization 13 until then. Oh. Ooh, simulated. Mm. Ooh, revelations. Mm. Does this align with a the theory that you had? Hmm? Uh, not really. I mean, I wonder with the pixely stuff, if there was some sort of... 
but yeah, I was sort of more leaning into memory stuff, obviously with bloody what's her name. I was leading into. <laughs> I mean, it's it's related. No, no, I was leading into memory stuff more than like simulation stuff, but it makes sense. I'll get into this a bit more in a couple minutes, but you're not far off, to be honest. Roxas returns to his body and in a fit of anger summons the Keyblade and just wrecks his computer. Mm, He's like, fuck your computer. You don't take notes on it anyway. (laughs) I'll I'll let you keep your typewriter. You have to find your reports manually, (laughs) you prick. Uh, For some reason, destroying the computer deactivates the locks, I guess, and he can go through a door. Makes sense. Down the hall, Axel appears again before Roxas. Now, with his memories returned, Roxas actually remembers him this time. But Axel says that it's too late and attacks. Roxas now summons both of his iconic Keyblades and engages Axel. Fuck the Kingdom Key. Oathkeeper and Oblivion are cooler. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, you defeat Axel and get another shot of the past. Axel tries to stop Roxas from leaving, telling him that the organization will destroy him. But Roxas says that no one will miss him. Ugh. Aww. In the present, Axel tells Roxas that they'll meet again in the next life before fading. Further down the hallway, Roxas finds pods. Donald and Goofy are in some shitty hallway pods, basically what they deserve. <laughs> like, straight up. Like, you know how you know how Sora got that like massive ornate room and he's in like a massive central pod? Yeah. You find Donald and Goofy in like Just like round by the bins almost like, <laughs> like, <pretty much>. like, <laughs> they're, like they're not even like the only pods in the room. They're like in, <laughs> there's like 30 pods in this hallway, and they're just in a random two. Yeah. <laughs> They're, like, haphazardly scattered in a hallway. Yeah, it's like Sora's pod was made for him. Donald and Goofy were just, like, shoved in a corner. Shove these idiots. No, so, well, we don't know what we're, not, we're not callous enough to kill you, but we don't give a fuck about you. Sora is nominee's <laughs> priority item at work. They're her, her backup goals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at the hall, at the end of the hall, is Sora's pod room with Diz waiting. choked up there seeing that oh, <laughs> oh this game is so emotional man yeah it's good stuff oh everything surrounding rocks is just really emotional <laughs> um he says that the last of the keyblades chosen that at last the keyblades chosen one has appeared to which rocks asks him if he means him or sora diz of course replies that he means half of sora he tells rocks that he dwells in darkness and that he needs someone who can move about the realm of light to destroy organization 13 he calls rocks a tool and Roxas tries to slash at him, sadly seeing that it's just a projection. Diz directs Roxas to Sora's pod, telling him that they share some, telling him to share some of that hatred with Sora, as Sora's too nice for his own good. But honestly, not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roxas, however, is adamant that his heart belongs to him. Yeah. Diz disappears, and the pod finally opens, revealing Sora. Roxas tells Sora that he's, oh, I'm getting choked up again, going to the line. Uh, Roxas tells Sora that he's lucky, delivering the iconic line, looks my, like my summer vacation is over. Mm. Finally, the Kingdom Hearts 2 logo flashes on screen, and the tutorial world is done. Get fucked. <laughs> this has all been a tutorial. And it's been an that hour. Is the saddest. Yeah. Like. Oh. Uh, th- that is never just the tutorial. Oh, <laughs> I thought we were getting close to the end of the game. Yeah. No. No. That's the tutorial. Chase is this crying. Is... I love you, no, buddy. It's totally fair. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is what I. That was wild and quite sad, and and, and really well done. Yeah. I, 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 I... See, if you thought that was sad and really well done, I'm so excited to hear you with, on three fifty eight. Yeah. Okay. Because that's just like an entire game of sad and really well done Roxas. Okay, I like Roxas. That's, uh, yeah. That, yeah. That was wild. It's just, we're now looking at, listeners, we're now looking at just a picture of Sora being held up by, <laughs> there they are, fuck stick and weasel. <laughs> and I'm, holding them back up. I'm so glad that you hate them as much as everyone else. <laughs> it's more Donald, obviously. Um, actually, now I'm looking at it, he's sort of picking Donald up by his do, waist. Do you like their new outfits? Um, mm, proper upgrades, sure. isn't it? They got great ones. Yeah, sure. So Sora's two like years Sora's, older? I like Sora's new outfit. Well, so, Sora's... I know it's all a bit murky because of time, right? Um, but Say he was 11 in the last game. roughly a year has right. passed. Um, 
just a bit over a year has passed since the last... So he's only actually a year older. I would like to highlight that in the image that we had um, of of blindfolded Riku, Riku looks like a man. At least a very, very tall, I very old he boy. he went from looking like a 14-year-old to he looks like he's maybe 16 or 17 now, mm. is where I'd put him. Okay. Especially would... knowing what he looks like in some of the later oh. games, where he looks like he's like 20. <laughs> But that, that highlights at least two to three years, and you've told me that Sora's been for a year. See, I know based on appearances, but keep in mind, so as a minor spoiler, 358 days is the length of time that Roxas spends in the organization. Mm. Roxas, of course, is created right before the Battle with Handsome, and then he spends a couple months in uh, the Data Twilight Town before he returns to Sora. So it's only about a year since the Battle of Handsome. So uh, maybe we're getting into stuff that I'm not supposed to know yet, but we kind of touched on this earlier. The the fact that Sora had the memories of Twilight Town in the last game, in the previous game, is the is this the reason that he had this? Yeah. It was his it was his other half. It was because, his nobody. Now I will say that should raise some questions as to why his nobody was existing at the same time as him. Which we'll get to later. Oh, I was going to um, say, do we... Just, we to, just to plant that? that seed in your head now, that that's bizarre. Um, well, the question of where where has Roxas come from, sort of. Well, because... R- recall that Roxas was created at the end of the Battle of Ansem. But then, like, 20 minutes later, Sora comes back into his own body after Kyrie gives him a warm hug. Mm. Um, but Roxas is still milling about. So, through the entirety of Sora in Castle Oblivion... Roxas is just going about his daily tasks in the castle. Right. So, yes. our sweet boy, sweet baby boy is back awake. Yay. But before we get to him, uh, we get a nice flash of the train platform where we see the ghost train. Oh. Woo! And it pulls into the station. Okay. And off of it, Mickey gets off in one of the organization robes with his hood pulls up. He's being all sneaky. Okay. But cool. you can't hide those fucking ears. No, I mean, so it's, it's like, like yeah. it, it, it's like, oh, he's a so hoodie drag- robe organization so member, short. but he's like a foot tall. Dragging, <laughs> dragging behind him on the street. Yeah. Um, I'm also pretty sure he has his key blade out at that point. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. Like this. <laughs> I'm here, huh? <laughs> I'm part of the organization. I'm one of you. <laughs> So, oh, uh, <laughs> we get one gla- last glimpse of Roxas in the darkness as he calls out to Sora, but we're at last in the real world, because remember, he rejoined in the data world. Mm. Sora's pod opens, and our hero awakens to the awaiting Donald and Goofy. Yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Reunited, they try to remember what happened after defeating Ansem, because defeating Ansem is the last memory they have. Cool. Uh, recall that Nominee wiped everything from Chain of Memories. So Sora doesn't remember any of the other organization members he's nope. met. My god, okay. No, he does not. Uh, he doesn't remember, doesn't killing, remember killing dusting people. them. Yeah. <laughs> I committed murder. <laughs> oh, I'm 12. <laughs> <laughs> he's 13 now, oh, though. Sorry, yeah, you're right. Or he's organization 13. Ha 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 ha. Um <laughs> So the last thing they remember is that they were gonna go look for Riku. Hmm. Um but, just to check, Jimmy looks in his journal where he sees the little note to thank Nomine. And they go, who's Nomine? Oh, oh, um, so, they they leave the mansion, they wander around, and in front of uh, the train station, they reunite with Mickey and his golden keyblade, uh, who tells them to board the ghost train and leave town, saying simply, the train knows the way, and handing, ro- and handing them... Roxas's money pouch. Like, here's some money, and it's Roxas's pouch. This raises my question. So, back when the Roxas simulation stuff, how the fuck? This is why I stopped you there because I think you're trying to say you brought it out. How the fuck is the Roby, aka Ansem, I guess, right? How is he bringing stuff out of the simulation into real life? He's like, look at me, I've got this money, and this is like, that's digital money, you fuck. So, <laughs> and he goes, it's 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 in the 2000s, all money this is digital. Is it's like just a 3D printer is connected to the computer, basically. Is that the idea? You can print stuff so from there's it? There's a teleporter to get into the data world. This is why things... Things in like the Matrix. So you could bring things out of the Matrix into the real world. Essentially, yes. So you could bring... Ro- well, no, because Ro- I guess Roxas is a whole other kettle of fish because he's a nobody and all that life. No, but you could... They, like, they literally teleported him into the datascape. That is his physical ro- nobody form. 
in the data scape. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay. Um, so, yes, you could bring Roxas out. Right. As Axel was trying to do. That's sure, why... That's fine. Yeah. I mean, it brings out the... <clears throat> well, technically, in a kind of way, we now have the realm of light, the realm of dark, and the data realm. I hate it. In a kind of way. It's not really technically a realm, but similar kind of... It's a different plane. So, Mickey gives you the money, and he's like, get on the train. It knows the way. Sora's, Sora's like, oh, shit, Mickey, you're here. Where's Riku? Um... Good question. And Mickey's like, I don't know, bro. Sorry. I lost him. What does um, that mean, so, Mickey? Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, for a third game in a row, Sora's quest is drag Riku back to the island. <laughs> <laughs> Riku, um, I know that our sole motivation at the start of the first game was to escape the island and go on an adventure. I'm done with adventuring, and we're going to go back to Destiny Island now. <laughs> honestly, fair. So, Sora's like... Well, I got my I got my adventure. Double what you doing? And they're like, "We'll come with you, cause three half pints make a whole pint." Is that a thing? Is that what they say? Oh, oh that is a thing, thing they say continuously over the course of the entire series. Right, cause three half pints don't make a whole pint. They're not Two half pints make a whole they're pint. <laughs> All right, okay. One, that's a joke. Two, they're very unintelligent. Um, and three, it makes for a very emotional moment in Kingdom Hearts three when they finally call him a whole pint on his own. Oh, very. Good. Because okay. usually. <laughs> I don't know that. Usually, it comes off... It's usually Donald's trying to degrade Sora, calling him just a half pint. Mm. And then Goofy's like, we're all half pints. Three half pints make a whole pint. Oh. Yeah. So... They come in pints? It's, it's just... <laughs> it's just typically Donald's a cunt, Goofy's sound, and then when you get the line in Kingdom Hearts 3, it's Donald who finally calls him a whole pint, so it's very emotional. Um, anyhow... <laughs> cool, yeah. Let's <laughs> sidetracked um so they decide to go together for one more journey cool i did forget to mention this um while wandering around town they met the twilight town gang oh um, like roxas's pals yeah there's okay. not really anything more to say about that they kind of just met him uh because sora wandered into their hideout so it wandered into data town no, no twilight no, no. town's a real so, place remember oh so so yeah, the, the so counterparts the, exactly. the real counterparts so the real right ones. okay um because Data Twilight Town is an identical replica down to the people. The only difference being Roxas is there. Yeah, cool. Um, so Sora wandered in, met them all. That's kind of it. They end up coming to the station and seeing them off. Uh, kind of saying that for some reason they felt like they should. Aww. Cute. Um, Sweet. Olette, Doesn't make any sense, but cute. Oh, they, eh. They, eh. Olette notices uh, that her and Sora have the same wallet. Which feels a bit odd to her. Um... For reasons that we'll get into later. Okay. Um, uh, and before leaving, Sora's like, I don't think we're ever going to see Twilight Town again. Which is hilarious. Cause, um, I feel like we are. Because it, it, it blows up the next scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, as we get ready to board the ghost train, Hainer asks Sora if he's sure that they haven't met before. And Sora sheds a tear. Aww. But he doesn't know where Aww. it came from. Oh, fuck. On the train, Sora reaches into the wallet and pulls out Roxas's lost trophy marble, saying that he doesn't know why, but looking at it makes him feel sad. Aww. Oh, this is awful. I know. Oh. Ev everything Roxas related is put in this game to break this your heart. Beautiful. Roxas just has, like, a consistently shit time. Like, he doesn't have a good time ever. It's just bad all he, the way through. He does one day. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and he also beats okay. up Cypher a little bit, I guess. That's fun in his date escape. Um, so as, as, uh, the ghost train pulls out, um, the windows of the train flash as the train seemingly teleports, um, and it is now on, like, a track flying through space. Sure, I'm not, yeah, just keep going. Uh, this, the scene fades. <laughs> Elsewhere, Axel, Nominate, and Ansem are sad. Oh. Hmm. Ansem tells them that it's time to go, but Axel says they don't have ex exactly have homes to return to. Nomine says that, that might be true, but looking down at her picture of Sora and Roxas says that there's some place that she wants to go. Axel agrees, and Ansem asks if Axel will let them go, saying that he, uh, saying that he's here to destroy them, but Axel lets them leave. So why is <laughs> Wait, so, why yeah, is Ansem, Ansem with um with Nomine? Yeah, why are they working together? What's their point? gist? Honestly, it's never really explained. Because at this point, we've just seen him be mega creepy with uh, with Diz, and he's a baddie. What's his fucking? He just wants to take over the world, right? And destroy and bring out about Kingdom oh, Hearts and 
no, 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 no. Ansem. Ansem. Ansem, the, the Ansem robed guy has been working with Diz this so, time. So, it is Ansem, but the whole time, he's not acting like the evil Ansem we knew. He's kind of like, he just feels like a normal guy. Right. To be honest. It's maybe like an Ansem that before discovered all the dark shit. Yeah, kind I, of I'm getting might have been like, like, yeah, like, maybe. like he just he just seems like a normal dude to be honest. Okay. Uh he he he, he and we know that sad. he had lost his memories and that they had been Well, he, he he lost his memories of Sora specifically. Right. So they are a separate faction to Organization 13, but Axel is occasionally dipping his head into the meetings and things and pretending that he's still part of Organization 13. Is that what we're led to believe at this so point? So Axel is not part of their of this other group. Axel, right. Axel is a free. Exactly. Axel is a free agent. He does what he wants. He was he okay. was um, a full on member of Organization Thirteen, but has since. But, so, so Axel was sent here to destroy them, but kind of met with them. Of course, he had that whole thing with Nominee and Chain yeah. of Memories, and he lets them go. Cool. Okay. Sure. Um, no problem. Because of course, uh, he's now big sad that Roxas is gone forever. Gotcha. Um, back on the train, it finally arrives at its destination. Oh, a lovely tower floating in the tower. middle of nowhere. Oh. And at the top, it's got a wizard hat that kind of matches the wizard hat that was on the ghost train. Oh. Cute. Uh, as Sora gets off, the train disappears. At the door is Pete. Pete up Pete. Right. Oh, you don't know, eh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm Pete. Who tells them how he's sent... He's, he's like looking in the door. He's like not looking at them. He, as he's... For some reason, just tells whoever's behind him right. that he sent his lackeys inside to see if the master of the towers is big and tough, as they say. I wonder if he's as big and tough as they say. He tells them that, that <laughs> the master of this tower is a powerful sorcerer. Um, and once he makes him a heartless, he'll do what Pete says. Oh, yeah, Pete's hearing, got a plan. <laughs> hearing heartless, of course, the trio's like, oh, shit, weapons out, boy. And Pete... Uh, says that with the Harkness at her side, his dear friend Maleficent is going to conquer everything. Oh. But Maleficent's dead, Chase. Well, like you said, did, did we see a body? Yeah, good point. <laughs> did we see a corpse? We did slay a dragon. Did we sure. see her fade into particles? That's what you need for an actual death in this game. Okay. If yeah. you don't fade into light or darkness particles, you're still alive. That's the shot in the head scream rules of this universe. Exactly. So. Did Vexen do that? Vexen burst into flames. Well, Did he I, also then fade away after? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dead. Okay, cool. The flames were just the weapon that killed him. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, finally, Pete turns around and he's like, oh shit, Donald and Goofy, I recognize you guys. And we get a little bit of exposition that apparently years ago, Mickey banished Pete to another dimension because he was causing trouble in Disney Town. I mean... Um, but, I mean, sure, I guess? But Maleficent <laughs> broke him out, which is hysterical because we eventually do see this trouble and it is like the most benign trouble in existence. So Mickey really is the kind of authoritarian ruler that I had feared. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. No, knowing knowing, and not spoiling exactly what it is that Pete does, uh, fuck Mickey Mouse. Also, Straight up fuck funnier, Mickey Mouse, man. Even funnier, yeah. they say that. It's Minnie who banishes him. Oh, you're right. Yeah, fuck Minnie as well. It's fucking yeah. Minnie who banishes him. Pete gets a bad rap. <laughs> Straight up. Well, I mean, Pete's awful, but... I'll fight you on Pete. Uh, <laughs> he, deser he deserves a fighting chance. Awful, but I will say in that one situation, fuck Mickey and me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so mysterious sorcerer. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, and it's at this point that Sora informs Pete that Maleficent's dead. Pete didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Pete's seemingly been like it's out of it for the year. past year. <laughs> He doesn't know Maleficent died. <laughs> Can you imagine? Maleficent's probably given a very vague instruction, like, bring about the Heartless and do a Keyblade or something. <laughs> and Pete's like, yo, I want it for like the past five years. Hasn't spoken to Maleficent. Kingdom Hearts 1 has happened. And Pete's just like off in other worlds like, I'm causing chaos for Maleficent. <laughs> I'm doing my job. Literally. Um... <laughs> He summons some Heartless, you drive him off, he runs off, and you ultimately go to the top of the tower where you find Yen Sid. Oh. Uh, I, do you recognize Yen Sid? No. Um, What's his name backwards? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> he's, so, wearing, he's wearing the, the, the Mickey hat from Fantasia, isn't he? Well, yes. so he's, he's from Fantasia originally. Oh, right. uh, r I remember that in Fantasia, Fantasia Mickey is case. his apprentice. Oh, right. Yeah, so this is the sorcerer who Mickey is apprenticed oh, okay, to in Fantasia. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and he appears in a few other Disney properties, but I think he's most notable from Fantasia. 
I also found out recently that not only is his name backwards Disney, he was modeled by the animators off of Disney, including his personality. Oh, uh, that which, makes you, that explains why he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't think translates well in this game. Does the but... anti-Semitism translate into the game <laughs> um, particularly given well? Given Fantasia, or... probably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love Fantasia, but there are mm, some moments. Yeah. Um, so, realizing who it is, Donald and Goofy immediately stand in attention and bow, saying that it's an honor and that Sora needs to show respect. So clearly, Yen Sid is... Somebody well respected by the denizens of at least Disney Castle. Um, Yensid tells him that the king is busy, so the task of training them falls to him as their journey ahead is going to be dangerous. The king of where? King Mickey. Usually, the king is busy. Oh, the king of the galaxy. Right, right. If, if if I say the king, ninety nine percent of the time right. I am referring to Mickey. Yeah, got you. Cool. Um, ninety nine. <laughs> So we need to be on the lookout for that 1% then. <laughs> yeah, so Yen Sid tells him that everything's connected to Sora as he's the chosen key that's going to open the door to light. Oh, what does that mean? Um, chosen <laughs> um, Yen Sid continues saying that the Heartless are still around after Anzim's demise because darkness exists in all hearts and as long as it does, the Heartless are going to continue. Okay. They're not as much of an issue these days. You know, they're not eating worlds anymore. They're just kind of still residual mm. like cockroaches I get it yeah kind of yeah exterminator like, straight up literally or um, orcs after the end of Lord of the Rings yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> he continues to finally explain uh, kind of officially that when somebody falls to darkness they become a heartless but additionally if this is the first time this appears outside the answer reports so for most normal people mm. this is the first time you actually get this exposition dump uh, because up to this point remember whilst I have now told you about nobody's and you were well aware of nobody's mm. prior to this if you hadn't read the answer reports which i don't think were in the original release of the game this is the first time you learn what a nobody is and you might be able to from this scene wow actually link rocks is back wow okay um which makes that original cutscene make even less sense because you don't know why rocks needs to go back to sora yeah because I... him being that nobody it doesn't fully click I'm very glad that you have just kind of straight up answered our questions on that because otherwise I don't know if I could sit through three hours of trying to piece that information together. <laughs> I, I've already done it with a 30 hour game and I don't want to do it again. Um, yeah. But so he continued to explain that uh, obviously Fall of the Dark has become heartless um, and if you had a, a heart of a strong uh, blah, 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 blah. if you had a strong will the empty shell about uh, left behind is going to start acting on its own becoming a nobody um the spirit lingers on even if the body fades from existence which also puts in that spirit is a different thing from heart but it's just, they're not so, gonna go into that there is so much of the if you're a strong <laughs> strong heart strong personality if you're a strong heart you can continue through the darkness <laughs> if you're a strong heart you're nobody well, yeah but what if you're a strong spirit though that seems like a different thing <laughs> so all, yeah metaphors all, don't matter in kingdom hearts everything is literal <laughs> yeah um he tells them that they don't really have hearts. They don't really exist. It's all right. ruse. Um, and he continues to say that the that most heartless will attempt to do them hard, but ultimately, that most um, excuse me, nobodies will attempt to do them harm, but don't ultimately have a will of their own. However, those cloaked in the robes are different. Um, these powerful no nobodies have formed Organization Thirteen, which command the lesser nobodies. Unlike Heartless that kind of act on instinct, nobodies have the capacity to think and plan. The king, uh, his whole mission in this game, last game, his mission, why is the stars going out? Mm -hmm. This game, what is their plan? Cool. Uh, what's the organization up to and why do they all have just the sickest anime hair? So yeah, that was my question. So lesser nobodies are the dusks. Uh, the dusks the higher nobodies are. are the anime people. Yes. Cool, cool. Okay. So no the organization kind of sits at the peak of nobody society, shall we say? Great. Mm -hmm. Um as the ones with the strongest spirits when they died exactly. who are now have will and uh, yeah. Uh, and I will say as well cuz I think it <clears throat> is put here and I didn't put it in my script is the reason that they look like humans is again because of how strong their hearts were before they died. Um, you are able to retain your actual appearance of the person you were prior to your ultimate demise. Mm. So if Pluto died, we couldn't get a nobody of Pluto. That's... That's, that's, that's going into a do dogs go to heaven yeah. question. I'm not yeah. going to go into that. 
I don't want you to answer it. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't like the answer. <laughs> That's a very... Uh, so, uh, anyway, Jensen's like, yo, bro. Because up to this point, Sora... Whilst he has grown and he looks like he's about two, three years older, he's still in his clothes from Kingdom Hearts 1. Mm-hmm. And they're, like, way short on him. <laughs> they're, like, yeah. they're like, little short shorts on him. His, like, sleeves are way up in his... Yeah, it's just like, you're fucking Jensen's... embarrassing and we're fixing yeah. that. <laughs> Jensen's, quite a nice detail. Jensen's like, go to the next room. The good fairies are in there. They're going to give you new clothes. What, the three um, fairies from fucking... Uh, Sleeping Beauty, yes. <laughs> the, the, the colored ones. I don't yeah. remember that. They make clothes in this series... They're seamstresses for some reason. So after that, Yen Shin shows them to their gummy ship. It's back, baby. No, amazing, amazing. Sending them off, explaining <laughs> that whilst the worlds have returned to their original states and the pathways between them have disappeared, uh, they'll need to find new pathways between the worlds. Why would there be new ones? So that's the thing. Most of this game is you creating the new oh, pathways. Okay. Cool. To so we are actively fun. connecting the worlds. Exactly. Cool. Okay. But we're connecting them in a different way than unlocking their hearts. Oh, why? It's so unnecessary, man. Just well, you're gonna go to some Disney worlds. Here's a fucking flight path. Yens has given you a How magical are you route. There? Barriers. Who cares? Yens has brought down the barriers. Problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> Let's come back it's in. Just, everything needs to be over-explained to be like to fucking fifty paragraph. Just, just magic. It's a world of magic. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> also, this gives also like I said in the last game. This gives Sora something to unlock. Sora needs to lock or unlock something, or is it really a Kingdom Hearts game? Well, why do we need to? It's <laughs> so, yes, it's because yes, he has no. a key. I hate it. You Fuck can't it. give him a key and not have him lock or unlock anything. Oh. Like it's just, it's like it's fucking. You have to read a fucking dissertation to understand how like a ten percent of the magic works in this universe. Oh, well. And that's, it's not even the character relationships. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Your notes are the length of a dissertation. <laughs> um, this <laughs> this is more than six times the length of my undergrad dissertation and my master <laughs> and my not- master's thesis combined, which is hysterical to me. Thank Eddie. you for thank you for doing this. Thank you. <laughs> in the other room, Maleficent's crow appears in the window, mm. and it's holding the cloak that she had at the end. That, like. Remember, she she turned into just her cloak yeah, yeah, at the end yeah, of the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the the crow drops it right in front of the good fairies. Uh, and as they worry, recognize it and worry over what to do, it rises from the ground. She's back, baby! Whee! Why? We have 13 villains to test to go up against. I Here we go. Why are you upset with I'm this? grumpy Uncle Monty. Here he <laughs> comes. I don't... Fuck off, Maleficent. So, we beat you. I'm going to leave it at this. I really don't think you want me to go into why she's back. <laughs> <laughs> because it will take me about 20 minutes to explain. Yeah, let's not. Ah, sure. Go I will on. leave yeah. it. I would like to say that I am feeling... I, I really... I preferred the previous game... Um, We're only like an hour Jane, into this. No, Jane, no, no. I'm saying I, pre- I preferred the previous to f- the first one. Oh right. I preferred Chain of Memories to the first one. However, it is quite nice to get back to like you compare it to the first one. It's like <laughs> here's Captain Hook and Jafar. Wooga wooga wooga. And we went to like you're not gonna fucking remember anything anymore. <laughs> anyway, the adventure begins and we start at Hollow Bastion, whoa, the world of the whoa. last game. Oh my god. Where we see uh, that there's a rebuild effort going on. The Final Fantasy characters are here. Remember that this was their castle. Oh, this was okay. Ansem's castle before it fell. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Before Maleficent took it over, fell it to the Heartless. And so they're all back, and they're they're rebuilding it. So there's a whole restoration effort going on. It's great. So is this like our new Traverse Town for this game? Essentially. Right, okay. Essentially, yes. Um, wherever the Final Fantasy characters is your hub world of a sort. Right. <laughs> Um, so, uh, when you meet up with them, they, Leon tells them that a few months ago, everyone suddenly remembered them all at the same time, and that, uh, when that happened, they kind of suspected that they were going to be seeing him soon. Cool. So, of course, everybody had forgotten about them for a while. Um, Sora asks if they've seen the king, but no one knows where he is. The Final Fantasy gang then tells them that they're having trouble in a Hollow Bastion restoration, and that they need help dealing with the Heartless and the Nobodies that are, that are crawling around everywhere. Uh... You look out over the ruin of Ansem's castle, and it is swarming with heart. Like, down at the base, there are 
thousands of Heartless just kind of skittering about right at the base of the castle, you're off maybe a, a couple miles away from the castle itself okay. in like a smaller auxiliary, uh, auxiliary town. Uh, Leon notes that they want to make it better than it was before the Paul, uh, but the Heartless and the Nobodies, because there's Nobodies skittering around too, they need to go. Uh, so, 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 so Sora Donald Goober are like, oh, Pete's running around controlling those Heartless these days. And also, Organization 13's an issue. Um, and, of course, the second they say Organization 13, you kind of hear a voice come from the background like, you called. Oh. As, uh, I think it's like, a first, like, one nobody appears. Um, and, and, like, beats you up. And then the voice returns saying how the, the, um, the Keyblade is marvelous. If only it were in more capable hands and like yeah oh. like just a bunch of them cloaked like i think it's all 13 of them or 12 remaining up here on like the top of like a roof above you are like looking down it's like a whole organization mm. it's like oh no well i think there's actually like six of them remaining aren't there well yeah, <laughs> you are you are true <laughs> that's still that's a good amount yeah. um so they they laugh and disappear um, but one of them teleports in front of Sora, teasing him. And Sora glares at him. Teasing him? I love it when villains are just cheeky. When yeah. they say thing. <laughs> this specific one is the teasiest little shit, and I love him. Sora glares at him, causing the man to laugh, saying uh, saying that he used to give me that exact same look before disappearing. Uh, so Sora kind of questions what he meant, but ultimately decides there's only one me. <laughs> So, this is kind of a recurring theme, is the organization keep almost talking to him as if he is Roxas. Right. Um, to kind of put into, but I'm me, into his head. Right, okay. Poor Roxas, man. Roxas is somewhere in the depths of his memory, like, no, I'm me! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fuck! <laughs> so, I forgot to tell you, uh, Final Fantasy team... They gave Sora a little card, and it said that he's an, an honorary restoration committee member. Aww. Cool. Um, so, for some reason, following that, uh, following this in interaction with the organization, he pulls this card out, and it glows. And, like, a crown appears on the floor beneath him. Um, and it, f and then the, the card flies into the sky and turns into a keyhole for reasons. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Sora unlocks the keyhole and it creates a path to your next world. But I thought you already unlocked the keyhole of Hollow Bastion. So this isn't the keyhole the of keyhole. the world. Right. This, this is, is another kind of keyhole. This is the the, the keyhole. Why are you so on board with this? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a keyhole of whatever path he is now opening to new worlds. Oh, okay, okay. So he is unlocking a path to new worlds. Uh, using something of this world to kind of break through the barrier. Uh, <laughs> I got you. I got you. Leon's like, yo, good luck, fam. They yeet out of there. Cool. Um, Leon getting as much characterization as he did in the first game. Love it. <laughs> uh, um, elsewhere, uh, back in the organization's lovely chair circle, the members are discussing the Keyblade when uh, ultimately their superior's like, we're going to make this adventure. One to remember. Why? <laughs> uh, they, they 90% of this game is straight up, literally their motivation feels like it's to fuck with Sora. Do, do they have a, something to do? <laughs> you got, yes. like, stuff what to do. What is it they're trying to do? They're trying to do something. They're trying to fuck with Sora, man. Well, why? <laughs> okay. Well, no, I know why, because they obviously are, like, mad at Roxas for abandoning them or some shit. It's just, like, about, like, 11 people just be like, a couple of you left us. Like, are they... <laughs> No, you like, are, are, I suppose you might be getting into spoiler territory here, but are the nobodies, like, trying to gain a new level of sort of consciousness and so hearts and... The only thing that we know that yes. has been explained so far is that they want to become whole. Right. And to do that, they need Kingdom Hearts. Right. Okay. So they're, just like Ansem, they're after Kingdom Hearts. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like the phrase of the question, though. They're trying to gain a new level of consciousness... And hearts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not technically wrong because, like, they want to become whole. So their whole thing is they want hearts. Uh, is hearts an, a noun, an adjective, a or a verb? I don't know. <laughs> uh, we fly off to the first world, China. <laughs> yeah. Um, where you do literally the plot of Mulan, but featuring Heartless. Love it. And the spear centaurs are the absolute worst cunts in the world. 
I hate that. It brings a new meaning to I'll make a man out of you when they're trying to become whole again. It's like... Oh, if only the game were that <laughs> clever. Oh. <laughs> um, at the end of the world, after um, saving the Emperor, he gives uh, Mulan and Sean Yu's sword. But as uh, but wouldn't you know it, it also flies into the sky. Crown appears under Sora's feet. Keyhole. <gasps> unlock more pathway. Great. Yeet. Um... You also, so th- th- this was a branching path. The other branching path, we can finally go to Beast's Castle. Oh, oh my god, the actual oh, world. Beasts. I know. Um, here, uh, you help. Uh, he doesn't look like Beast, though, anymore, though, because he and Bella are together, so he won't look like Beast. Look no, like he still looks like, like Beast. No, no, he doesn't. He looks like a man. No, no, like no when no, he looks like Bella, he looks like a man. Does, does, no. does, <laughs> does, does this say man's castle? No. no. Well, no, 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 no because, because in the canonicity of the movie, we arrive before the rose petals have fallen. So when he's still being like an abusive, exactly. But, Wait, but, but in this universe, he's also followed her to so Kingdom the thing Hearts. He saved her life. Here's the thing: is twice that, though. The, the timelines of the Disney movies are just so behemothly muddled. Anytime you visit them, okay. So it basically, doesn't need. Yeah, it, no. it, it so might. It, as, it might. As, it, this might as well be like an Elseworlds version of disney yeah okay so anyhow you go around uh you meet up with bell and the others and uh it just makes me feel sad about the relationship that he's still in beast form sorry continue <laughs> no i agree yeah no, sorry you just imagine he's a man we I've, there's no picture as far as i know chase i don't think there is so he's a man all right yeah, Pre- yeah. yeah. so so this isn't beast castle it's just a man's <laughs> castle <laughs> with a woman so we pick up a man's castle chase. Yes. <laughs> um and you help bell and others uh help man but oh no <laughs> The org is whispering in Man's ear. Oh, no. Uh, they, they're, they're making him think that Belle's coming for his castle and that she's going to kill him. <gasps> After all, who can love a man? <laughs> okay, all right. I'm, I regret this. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm having my favorite part of the whole night. <laughs> oh, I'm burnt. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, so you smack you smack Beast around a bit, uh, and he tells you that the name of the organization member is Zaldin. Okay. This guy got like spears, I guess. Is that his 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 character? He like he's a, he's a spear man. He likes spears. Yeah, I'm not. Zaldin doesn't have much character. He's got spears. He, he likes the spears. Right, he, so. he doesn't have a great amount of character. <laughs> um. So, yeah, he's been whispering, uh, he was using the beast's anger to control him and put him in the darkness. The man's anger. Uh, but... No, no, no. <laughs> but, anyway, y'all help him. Uh, you, you save Belle from a possessed demon chandelier. Oh, no. Um, that also turns into Beast Cannon at one point. No. It's very odd. Anyway. <laughs> um. A boss fight to remember. I, Fighting a chandelier. I love this boss <laughs> fight, man. This boss fight's great. Uh, so you celebrate um, beating that. And you get a glimpse of Zaldin before he yeets away. Uh, and it turns out that he wanted Beast to turn into a Heartless. So that if he became a Heartless, he'd create a nobody. And they could have control over his nobody. Oh, and because he's, a, and because he's a real strong, it would be a real strong nobody. Right. Um, anyway. Sora yoinks the rose, turns into a keyhole, new portal, we outie. Great. Next one. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> oh, no. Fuck off. Oh. Although it's nice to see the character I relate to most in the world pop up in the background of that screen. <laughs> so, Neil, can you explain who's on screen? <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Pe- Peglet. Eeyore, so, the rabbit whose name escapes me. This uh, rabbit. The rabbit whose name I nailed first time. <laughs> and we are outside Rabbit's house. All right, Chase, was, what's happening here? <sighs> yeah, I mean, just, just, <laughs> oh, this is just a break. How does, does Pooh speak? He sort of, oh, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bother. Oh, 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 oh. I can't do it. Um, but anyway, this is just a, a brief d- d- detour. You head back to Hollow Bastion. Merlin's like, oh, I found Winnie the Pooh's storybook. Because remember that Winnie the Pooh was in. Like, Merlin had his storybook in Kingdom Hearts 1. Um, but oh no, the Heartless steal it and they destroy it. And because the pages were destroyed, 
who doesn't remember you or his friends. So you just do a bunch of mini games to help it's, them. It just feels like in a universe where we go through these extreme like dichotomies of like good and evil, and then like child sacrifice and and, and, then, and then like it just makes me think: What does the heartless version of Winnie the Pooh look like? Like he becomes this twisted monstrosity. Um, Where's the honey? <laughs> um, Give me the fucking honey! No. Well, Give me the fucking honey! Well, I, I threw this in for a laugh. This is a fully optional side world. You don't have to do it. Um. But right. the mini games are okay. It's a fun little side world. Anyway, back in track. It's we cute though. It's quite to... sad. Like the, the like the, like yeah. thematically the whole concept of like Pooh's like forgotten his friends or something. It's yeah, like, you're like you got, them, right? yeah. Anyway, worst world time. Oh, for fuck's sake, we're back in Olympus Coliseum. Yes. No, it's the worst world. But this time, yeah. instead of landing in the Coliseum, we land down in the underworld. Ooh. You rescue Meg from from some from heart from some heartless, uh, and, and you're like, don't worry, Meg. We'll cool. Uh, we'll cool Hades jets. Um, we, he won't kill Wonder Boy anymore. No worries. But oh shit, Pete's with Pete's with Hades. Oh, Pete, the mastermind. <laughs> And they want to get an undead warrior to kill Hercules this time because Cloud didn't work in the last game. Yeah. Uh, also, there's this uh, like Org 13 member running around, but he, he's he, he seems to be a coward. So, so not really all that dangerous. Okay. Do, do we know? Does he get a name? Do we know who he is? No. Is he just in a robe? No, okay. he's, he's he's just an unnamed organization, coward organization 13 member so oh, far. Okay. Um. So Hades summons Auron who is from Final Fantasy X to kill Herc, saying that he'll free him, uh, assuming he's locked in, like, some prison in the Underworld, if he does. But Aaron's all like, nah, fam. And he, like, just smacks, uh, smacks Hades. He's so sassy, and he just joins Sora. Um, you fight Hades the whole time, does these weird little dances. Kill Cerberus. Kill again. Um, go back. Not to- killing them, though. No, the Lord of the Dead, he can't die. Oh, uh, go back to the Coliseum. He has the Olympus Stone. Hey. Uh, wait, uh, or he needs the Olympus Stone, but the organization member stole it. Oh, no. Gotta go find the organization member. Uh, and you find him running around, and it's Demix. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> He's got his sitar. Okay. Um, uh, and you don't like this? Is it, I think it's quite a cool design, Neil. No, you're not a fan of Demix. I'm just very tired. <laughs> uh, but D- Demix, uh, is like reoccurring character traits that he, de- he only calls Sora Roxas. And he has this like weird handbook of seemingly how to draw Roxas out of Sora, quote unquote, <laughs> which very what? clearly just doesn't work. Um, also, he fights with a sitar and he makes, and he makes water dance, water dance. Oh. Is that what he says? Uh, he does that. I don't remember this. He just keeps repeating it as he makes like w- music notes made of water bounce around. It. It's horrible. Oh. Um, do you think the other organization members sort of sigh and close their eyes and look at each other a little bit when he shows up for a fight? Oh, you joke, but literally they do that in cutscenes. <laughs> they straight up do that. Fuck, who told him to come? Who uh-huh. um, made him a nobody? <laughs> this guy again. There's fun fan theories surrounding Demix. Very fun fan theories. You hold on to them. That's an oh, end of, yeah. That's a tomorrow thing. Yeah. <laughs> So he drops the stone, you give the stone to Meg, uh, new Underworld Coliseum, um, and then the stone turns into a keyhole, and goodbye. Cool. Next one. <laughs> First three worlds completed, we get a scene of Maleficent back with P. Oh, yay! She's Woo! alive with Argo. And she's like, yo, bro, why weren't all the other Disney villains waiting for me to come back? Um... <laughs> Maybe because you fucking ditched Jafar, let Clayton die. <laughs> Oogie Boogie doesn't know what he's doing. Oogie Boogie's dead. Oogie Boogie's dead. dead. <laughs> Nobody uh, gives a fuck. <laughs> anyway, she's she's like, oh shit, Sora's still around? He's not dead? And makes Pete fill in. Then we go, finally, to Disney Whoa. Castle. Whoa. Um, why do we land here? No clue. It just happens to be the next path. Eh. The fans probably were like, where the fuck is Disney Castle? No. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> very, very coincidentally, as we land there, we see a scene where Queen Minnie receives urgent news that thorns have appeared in the Hall of the Cornerstone. Oh, great. Uh, and, she, and she, like, prays for Mickey, Donald, and Koofy's return. Now, lucky for her, we just unlocked this keyhole, and we are currently in the basement. Great. <laughs> We've just landed in the hangar. Chip and Dale are like, come to the library. 
you go and there's Heartless everywhere, and you meet Minnie, and she you br- she brings you to the cornerstone where Maleficent is. Oh no, and she wants the castle for herself. She's gonna make it all darkness. She's like, it needs a color change. It is far too white. Far I get that. I mean, I yeah. agree. After Chain of Memories, Disney. I don't really want to look Definitely. at white ever again. <laughs> <Far too white. laughs> um, so. Uh, anyway, she's, uh, corrupted the cornerstone. It's all covered in darkness and thorns. So you go grab Merlin. He comes helping you keep the keystone safe and unlocks a door to the inside of it. Enter the Timeless River, which is I love this. one of the coolest worlds. The entire thing's... So this is, uh, Steamboat Willie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's great. Cool. Um, and Look at he... Donald. I love the... Uh, actually, I was... Uh, Sora, I think. I really yeah. like Sora. Yeah, the designs are really cool. Design. That's quite. Oh, uh, Timeless River is fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you, anyway, Pete's running amok, smacking around a bit. Mission complete. And I remember specifically, very quickly, because I don't think you're going to comment on this because yeah. you're skipping over Disney Worlds, and I don't want to slow us down on the Disney Worlds, right? But I remember just while I'm on my wee, you know, let's feel a little bit sorry for Pete train that Mickey is pretty dickish to Pete in this world in his mimey way, like he is in the yes, cartoons. Absolutely, absolutely. Pete's just like trying to drive a, a boat and Mickey's like smacking him about the head and like running rampant. I'm yeah. gonna be king, yeah. bitch. You gotta beat up like old <laughs> Pete as well. And he's, he's just a guy trying um, to do his job. He's just like a blue I mean, collar worker. The only fun thing is like, you, you get like the cornerstone back from Pete because this is like where the Disney castle was broke ground and that's the cornerstone and this is back in time. Anyway. There's no such thing as a good billionaire. <laughs> is this the first sign of time travel we've had in the whole game? Well, yeah, it's not really time travel. You more, more go into the heart of the cornerstone itself. Right. What's that? Doesn't matter. Move on. Don't care. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I have questions I will ask you off camera. They're not really relevant, <laughs> to be honest. It doesn't explain anything important. Anyway. Come out. Thorn's gone. Castle safe. Good for you. Turn that keystone into a keyhole and smack open some new pathways. Great. On to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Out of there. <laughs> next up. Yeah. Port Royal. Right. I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> Straight in. See? Straight in. See? see in a, in a, and this was a bit of a spoiler. In the, in the slides for game one. Mm. Yeah. Barbosa was on there as a villain. Yes. Depending on when this film came out. Now, my memory of the later Pirates films is foggy. I probably didn't see the, the more recent two. Barbosa's only a baddie for that first film. The plot of this is the first film. Oh, okay. All right, fair enough. So, yeah. All right, okay. What do you think of how Jack looks? I think he's quite well I rendered. Think he looks, but look, looks very disturbing because he's next to another human from a different style of animation. He looks really, he looks like a PS2. Like, I had the Pirates of the Caribbean game on PS2. Yeah. Like, I, 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 yeah, he looks like that. It's a bit off putting. I'd like to highlight this is the second time we've come to the UK. And not the UK, the, the Earth, rather. Pete's collabing with Barbosa. Um, you do shenanigans. Uh, the, the whole treasure. It's cursed. Oh, no. Um, uh, rescue Elizabeth. Kill Barbosa. And Jack's compass turns into a keyhole. Onward away and away from these creepy models. Very quickly, um, one thing that I re- really remember enjoying about Sora's character here is that he specifically is like, Jack is so cool and I want to be a pirate. And as somebody who loves pirates to his absolute dying day, uh, I was like, yes, Sora, you get that pirate booty. And it really is. And Don- Donald and Goofy are like, I think we think he's a bad guy. And Sora's like, nah, he's a pirate. Fucking yas. Let's go. I mean, literally, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. It's like the first time Sora's like showing a little bit of mischief and it's mm, great. I like the scene where he gets Sora... Fucked up on rum. Oh, well, that's good. I mean, true. Why is the rum always gone? Oh, that's so much funnier because you literally go to the Why is the Rum Gone Island in uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, I think. Oh. Um, But um, next one, Atlantica. Oh, Back to boy. creepy shirtless, shirtless boy. Um, This one in this world is literally nothing but musical minigames um, oh. because Ariel, Ariel can't stop thinking about Prince Eric. So Triton's like, we're going to put on a musical... I don't think I ever did this. Can you I, skip this? I don't know if it's required if I'm 100% honest. I don't remember doing this. I feel like it, it, it's it's a really weird one in that it kind of sits off in a corner of the map and you have to keep coming back as you unlock certain magic spells. Do we so sing? Like, Does Sora sing? Yeah, Sora sing. <gasps> Is he good? No, af- after, after, I'm, after. I'm going to find this for after because actually it's the fun... If, for, forget Sora singing... Because uh, Joel Osment can sing decently well. It's Donald and Goofy singing. Where's the key? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> cool. No, yeah. Chase, next uh, one. We'll, we'll jump on it later. Yeah, so there's not even a keyhole here for now, uh, and you need magic spells, so you can't even do anything more here. Holo oh, shite. All right. <sighs> next breath, back to Halloween Town. Yes, oh, this like time he there. has a Christmassy spooky yeah, outfit. Nice. But this one's cool because as you go between Halloween Town itself and Christmas Town, your outfit changes oh, to uh, either Christmas it. or. Um, and then Jack I feel like somebody else did the Halloween Town stuff and then Nomura did Kingdom Hearts stuff. <laughs> like, this is consistently the best part. <laughs> Love it. Um, More of this, please. But um, Maleficent's here stirring up trouble. Uh, Donald's a snowman. Goofy's a reindeer. Sora's a goth Santa. Uh, they meet Sandy Claus, who oh, who tells everyone that seven years ago, Sora told everyone he didn't believe in Santa Claus, so he's on the naughty list. <laughs> Like Seven years ago, somebody was five, he said that. It's yeah. depressing. Also sounds like somebody who isn't made of pure light. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so he's on the naughty list, man. Um, anyway, literally, Maleficent's just here because she wants to destroy Christmas. Why? I, I don't know. Maleficent just fucking hates Christmas. Maleficent literally seems like she's just about to sow chaos from this point on in the series because we've got an actual evil organization. Mm. Nobody wants to hang out with Maleficent. I wonder maybe if the movie Maleficent, which was sort of attempted to rehabilitate her image, was in fact a response to this series and not to the original (laughs) film. (laughs) Um, Anyway... Um, she brings back Oogie Boogie from the dead at one point. Sure, why not? Um, more heartless. He tries to take over Santa's workshop, kill him. Kill. Again. Death again. <laughs> um, and what does Sora say? I killed you the first time, Oogie! And then, and stabs then him. Sally yeah. gives Jack his Santa suit. This is actually uh, a, a picture from the second time you come back. Because, uh, spoiler, you go to every Disney World twice in this game. Oh. Oh yeah, fuck. Yeah. And it sucks. Followed it really the, sucks. By the part in the middle that you thought was the end. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Fuck. <laughs> oh, why do I like Kingdom Hearts 2? It's great. Um, oh. And it's got the best combat. Um, it does, yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, his Santa suit turns into the new keyhole uh, onward. Um, But before he leaves, Santa whispers in his ear, he's like, by the way, it was Riku who told you that Santa wasn't real. Oh. What a dick. <laughs> what, a, what a snitch. <laughs> what a dick. Anyway, we're back in Agrabah. <laughs> um, yeah. Iago's trying to suck up to Aladdin and Jasmine, like I think is the plot of the second movie. Uh, Abu has a black lamp. You don't actually fight Jafar the first time you come here. Uh, it's all Cave of Wonders bullshit. Um, you get that red crystal that Abu was trying to steal in the movie, um, and it turns into a keyhole. Fine. Cool. Next. Great. Next. Uh, then you get Pride Lands. <laughs> Pete's a lion. Sora's a lion. Donald is Donald is still a duck, <laughs> but with but with but with a, a, another bird's wings. <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. Why isn't Donald just a duck? <laughs> are 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 tortoises native to the savanna? Oh, like, are they? <laughs> are, would a tortoise be in the? I don't know. Are they in the African savanna? I, I don't think we're gonna question it. Man. Okay. Right. Go on. <laughs> I oh. love, I gotta say, just a quick note, I love his lion mane still being like anime hair. <laughs> I know. That's cute. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, the designs are really cool for this um, one. Pete, Seer, Heartless are here. You kill Scar, throw him <laughs> off the mountain. And, uh, you know Flying Ghost Mufasa? Yeah? Yeah, Flying Ghost Mufasa turns into the keyhole. No, he doesn't. He does. What? Is this also an optional world? Because I have no, no recollection of this. <laughs> Fucking hell, all right. Um, yeah. <laughs> the fact that we're running through it so fast makes me imagine that's how they're doing it. Like, they just come through and they, like, get there before any of the plot stuff. Mufasa's is not even on the edge push, of the cliff. And they just come, the no, they just come kick Scar to death and go, right! Like, where's the key thing? Yeah, right, let's go. I will say, we stay, what? Here, we stay here vaguely longer the second time we come back. Okay. Same with all the Disney worlds, but first time, no, we, we come, find a key, all done. Fine, um, yeah. Let's move on. So, <laughs> next. elsewhere, um, we see, it's the city that Roxas and Axel were in. Are we playing as Pluto? No, nah, we just see a cutscene of Pluto, and he sees uh, Axel walking through and disappear through a dark portal. Um, but then be- behind him, another dark portal opens, and Pluto runs through the other dark portal. Oh, okay. Uh, Where's he going? We find out later, do we? He's off. Back on Destiny Islands, oh. Kyrie is asking herself if waiting is good enough when Axel appears, telling her to act. Uh, he's all like, yo, I, I, I know Sora. We should go see him. Um, but before she can answer, Pluto shows up, and they get surrounded by nobodies, and a whistle comes from behind them, and another portal opens up, and Axel's like, uh, 
Kyrie, we have so much in common. Both of us really miss somebody. And Kyrie's like, yeah, you're really creepy and runs into Dark Portal. Cool. Is that because I feel like that would be the only thing they have in common because Kyrie doesn't have a character so far. So <laughs> Axel's like, I see so much of myself in you, Kyrie. I have a character. You don't. Look at Kyrie being in several cutscenes so far and having dialogue. I'm so know. proud I, of her. Yeah. yeah things, I, I, see, I, the funny thing is, by the end of the series, I love Kyrie as a character. And this is where she starts getting plot. It's just that Kingdom Hearts 1 did her so dirty. On the other end of the portal, Kyrie wakes up on the floor of the Twilight Town gang hideout. Great. Oh. And all of the Twilight gang are looking at her like, who the fuck are you? Um, meanwhile, of course... Alette's uh, like, there's only one girl in town with no character, <laughs> you fucking bitch. I'll yeah. get you. Back on the map, Chip and Dale, uh, who of course are still your navigators, are like, oh shit, man, Twilight Town's reappeared. Uh, because, of course, after you left it the yeah. first time, Twilight Town disappeared. Now, we love how the last time we were there, Sora's was like, we're never going to see this place again. And now we go back to um, Twilight Town. And, and Kyrie's in the real Twilight Town, not the Date Escape Twilight Town. Yeah, yeah. I so, think Date Escape Twilight Town is kind of done with. Yeah, we done, we done with it. Okay. Yeah. We're okay. pretty much done with Date Twilight Town. Um, so, go save Cypher and his uh, palace from some nobodies. Save Cypher? Save Cypher. Don't think so. Yeah, I was gonna say, is that a choice? That I'd leave. Maybe, maybe Cypher is less of a dick in the real world. Yeah. I would also yeah, like yeah. to know that thus far, the only uh, you save them from nobodies. As of this point, the only two places where nobodies have appeared is here in Twilight Town and in Hollow Bastion. Any of those Disney worlds, it was all heartless. Well, that's interesting. You didn't okay. fight any nobodies in those worlds. Cool. Okay. So it's almost like we've got two plots going on. Kind of. Yeah. So Disney World's continue to be a waste of fucking time. Um, for now. <laughs> cool. uh, okay. I have a note saying how the hockey boys suck. The hockey goalie fucking hammer boy nobodies are the fucking worst. Um, cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> yeah, <fuck 'em. laughs> um, so, anyway, um, after you defeat them, an organization member appears and he's like, yo, Sora, you seen Axel? Um... He's like, yo, so Axel's not acting in our best interests anymore. Um, and also, uh, you, we want you to be a heartless. Or, excuse, excuse me, Axel wants Sora to be a heartless. Cool. Sorry, who's saying this to Sora? A, a, a hooded Roby. We don't know who they are. We don't know who. Okay, classic. Uh, just yeah. some, so a dude from the organization. God, the game would be so much simpler if everybody just put their fucking hoods down. But all right, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> a man tells Sora that it would just... The man tells Sora that it would just break their hearts if something were to happen to Sora, and they want to oh, protect yeah. him. But Donald's like, bitch, you don't have a heart. Wow, okay. Seems Damn, like, it's like below, below, below the belt there. Do you remember when you died and you're barely in person anymore? <laughs> yeah. So, I do have... The, <laughs> I do have that the guy lowered his hood, but to be 100% honest, I didn't say who it was, and I don't remember. <laughs> uh, so the man opens the portal to leave, um... And Sora's like, oh, I'm going to come after you. I'm going to come after you. But the man's like, bruh, you want to end up like Riku? You really want to come in my dark portal? You're going to end up like Riku. Bye. Where is Riku? He's about. We still don't know what he's up to. Riku's somewhere. Okay. Um, I feel like this game would be better if we knew so what he was doing. Cypher gives Sora the Strife Trophy, telling him he's the strongest guy in town. Oh, that's a lot coming for, that says a lot coming for you, Cypher, the strongest man in town. I mean, it's hysterical <laughs> because even, even in the data world, uh, Cypher wasn't the previous champion of the Strife. It was this random, like, <laughs> flourishy dude with a flowery shirt. So really, it's not Cypher's to give. No, well... Like probably Nick. <laughs> yeah. Who knows, man? Well, what a fucking lamer, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Pence shows up and he's like, yo, Sora, do you know Kyrie? And Sora's like, Kyrie? Um, and Pence is like, yo, come to the station. She's there. Um, right. And you get to the station. And then Hainer and Olet are like, eh, she's gone. Sorry. Uh, your princess is in another castle. Thanks, Sora. All right, cool. Bye. Uh, and, and we had a flashback to where we see that. Remember how they were all chilling in their uh, hideout? Yeah. While they were, Axel shows up. He found oh. her very quickly. And the, ga the gang, like, tries to protect Kyrie, but he, like, just fucking pushes them to the ground and grabs Kyrie and yeets her through the portal. What a dick. It's very weird that Axel has such an infatuation with Kyrie. Like, of all the characters, for him to be like, I'm going to focus my attention on getting in touch with you, he decides to choose the girl that is unconscious for the entirety of one. While worrying about Kyrie, <clears throat> Goofy fucking drops the, the Strife trophy and the marbles fall off of it. 
Oh. Um, the Twilight Town kids and Sora pick up their individual <clears throat> marbles oh. and hold them up to the sun, allowing us to, for a brief moment, see uh, Roxas take Sora's place before going back. Um, oh. And then Sora throws the marble into the sky, it turns into a keyhole, and pew pew, unlocked. Cool. Did he know that was going to happen, or was he just throwing this thing that might be special to wow. these people that he's just met? I say, I say, th- it flew into the sky. Oh, okay. I was like, f- um. So we've done every Disney World in this game. Yay! In their first pastor. Oh. <laughs> and so we head back to Hollow Bastion, um, Great. where we meet Cloud, and he's looking for Sephiroth again. Oh. Um, leave it well alone. You don't want to deal with it. He is so much harder in this game than he was in the first game. <laughs> I'll show you his cool. boss fight later. He's a cunt. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Next. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you journey to the basement of Ansem's castle where you learn the final fantasy characters. They found his computer. Yay. Oh my God, they found wow. his computer. His actual computer. Except he, he, he didn't typewriter his notes on there, so. Okay. Well, yeah. um, what's on it? Also, oh, so you can tell us. the king's <laughs> here and he wants to know what's on the computer. Oh. Convenient. Just um, say king convenient. Because <laughs> that's good. I like that. I'm retconning that I did. <laughs> yeah. So you go in and you find just... The office is just ruined. The book's strewn about. It's uh, shit. And on the wall is a picture of a younger man who... um, Oddly doesn't look like Ansem for being as prominently displayed as he does. He looks a lot more put together mm. and nice hair than the Ansem... The super ripped tan Ansem that we've been seeing flying around in darkness. So this is the guy that sacrificed children yeah. to the Heartless. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, he doesn't look like other Ansem. He looks a little bit like, like enough that like you can connect the dots, but he doesn't look like the same. Yeah, they, 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 look, they look very similar, but they're like, this doesn't look like Ansem. That's weird. Mm-hmm. Leon punches the wall, secret passage, and there is the computer. Cool. Yay. Um, <clears throat> but... Um, and, and behind it is this really weird, like, circle thing. And Stitch appears on the roof. Huh. Stitch. Yeah. And he has a gun. Stitch. And he shoots Donald. What? Yeah. Stitch has a gun. <laughs> and Friendship means family. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and that makes Donald fall on the computer, triggering the master control program. Ooh. And it gets angry and warped. And, like, he makes the circle on the wall glow and it's a teleporter and it teleports you into space paranoid it's tron world get out of here tron classic oh tron my even god the outfits are good classic 80s 90s whatever tron <laughs> we got like young jeff bridges in this yeah it's great uh anyway in the computer you meet tron who tells you that ansem hijacked the original ncom system to become hollow bastion os the town's protection system. So in order to escape the MCP, which is what I will call the master control program from now on, in order to escape the MCP, you need to restore power to a terminal. And before leaving, Tron tells you to find his user who will be able to give you access to the DTD. Uh, What's the DTD? The DTD. It's where copies of all original data were stored. Donald the Duck. Yeah. I was going to say it's what Donald says when he's ready to get busy. He's down, he's down to duck. <laughs> anyway, on on the DTD, there are copies of all the original data, including, very likely, information on the Heartless and Organization 13. Okay, okay. cool. So, exposition. It's a, we we, we, we want to get that exposition done. Yeah, cool. Do. Okay. So, uh, mm-hmm. Tron also needs it to restore a backup of himself to before the MCP sealed his functions, so he can defeat the MCP once and for all and put the system back to how it was meant to be. Yeah. Which I think is the Tron, the Tron. movie plot. Yeah, yeah. I think um, Tron tells him that his user is a man named Ansem the Wise. Ooh. Cue the shock horror. Wait, have we heard of an Ansem the Wise up until now? Yes. Uh, Ansem the Wise is, is the, the king. The Final Fantasy yeah. king guy. He, yeah. he, he's the one that they... That's the title that all the Final Fantasy characters are referred cool, to. Cool, cool, okay. Um, for, uh, we don't know why these three are all shocked that he calls it Ansem when we literally know that we are inside well, Ansem's computer. To triple clarify here, Ansem the Wise is the same guy as the Ansem reports. Same person. Yes. Cool, no problem. Thank right. you. Ansem is Ansem is Ansem. Um, leaving the computer world, they... have uh, so they, they, they do get out. I've kind of skipped through the rest of the plot. Uh, they, they get out, um, and they follow a black-haired girl who's been snooping around the office. She takes the portrait off the wall, revealing 
a diagram with the words written above it in faded hollow main security Tron Door to Darkness. DTD. Ooh. Ooh. And it portrays this this kind of heart. It's surrounded by rings. Um, I don't know what this means. Are we meant to know what this means? No. It looks like it's written in... I was about to say gibberish, but some of these may be Japanese characters, so I don't want to call them gibberish. But it kind of looks like they're not at the same they time. They are... Is this just Kingdom Hearts writing? That's Kingdom... Yeah. Some of them are... Look like vague morphs of certain kana, but most of that's not Japanese. Um. Anyway. Cool. Um. So no, you're not meant to know what it means. That's fine. Uh, hearing the word Door to Darkness, Mickey appears. Oh. Um... We summoned him. But he's all he's a bit so yeah, I know, he he closed it before and now he hears it and he's like I'm here! Huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um but he's all he's all sus. Like he's, he's Why he's, is he always so see if this wee cunt if we find out that this little cunt knows later on, he's like, Oh but I knew about this! Ha-ha. I I'm just like, why? Why have you kept this under your hat? You're a wee creep. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um but so Mickey, M- Mickey's all sus. Like he's got his hood up. And he's like looking through the door. And he's like, "They follow me, they follow me." Um, and 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 he, he like shuts the door. And he's like, "The organization, they're listening to us." So he's super para in this game. Yeah, he's like um, on the edge. <laughs> Mickey on the edge. Mickey's tweaking. He was, in, he was in the darkness for a long time. Yeah. Like, Someone's so, out there. <laughs> pondering, pondering the password to to the door to darkness. The DTD, Mickey mentions that the door to darkness can only be opened by the seven princesses. Oh. They're back! And begins listing them off. What's he like? He's like, Snow White from the movie Snow White! <laughs> <laughs> so, the first Disney movie to come out! The, pass- the password to the door to darkness is literally Aurora, Cinderella, Belle, Kyrie, Jasmine, Sora, I mean, Snow. Snow. Alice. Wow. What? Like their names, their first yeah. names, not their letters. Their, their names just spelled out is the password. I just imagine them all going, sitting there going, oh, how do you spell Aurora again? Is, it... <laughs> is that Kyrie with an I? No, it's Kyrie with an A. Go, <laughs> oh, okay. so, 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 Sora tells Mickey that with the password they can a- access Ansem's research data. Maybe he did save a copy. Wow. Um, to which Mickey responds that they might be able to find him. Oh. And Sora's like, Mickey. Find who? We killed Ansem. Yeah. He's dead. And Mickey goes, Huh, huh, <laughs> I got a lot of explaining to do. So, but first, you need to go give the password to Tron. Tron's still waiting. So you go back in to beat the MCP. That's the MCP. In all, <laughs> in all his it's old. The, it's the Power Rangers computer. In all of his it's old. From Tron. That's what he looks like in the movie. Oh, yeah, it's right. the, yeah, it's oh. the yeah, it's the Tron. Yeah, MCP. Um. You go back in, give him the password, defeat the MCP, Dunzo, come back out. Um, right. Also, Tron changed the password to the DTD because it was a bit complicated, and he changed it to Sora Donald Goofy. Oh yeah, fuck them princesses. <laughs> Which is still just the best password skills. I love that he's like, look, you're my pals, and you help me out. Here's, I'm, I've changed, like, as a little honor code. Here's, I've changed the password to your names. What's the order? Doesn't matter. It's your names. <laughs> so, outside the computer, Sora proves that he still has no fucking clue how a computer works when he's, uh... <laughs> when he asks the supposed... Just kick it. <laughs> when he asks the supposedly dead man's ancient computer where Riku and Kairi are and it doesn't know. <laughs> he, just, he just goes on Google, where are Riku and Kairi? Because that's how computers work. <laughs> It's a computer just like fuck. Fair, off. before this point we have no evidence that computers existed or that he'd ever interacted with one. <laughs> we have very big data. He's about trying to like like jam his keyboard keyblade into the computer screen. <laughs> it's gotta be a door. Lock it. <laughs> What's a password? Is that like a key? <laughs> Don't ever Don't say, key? say key. <laughs> <laughs> The Door to Darkness, however, does have data on the nobodies in the organization, but sadly that data's corrupt because of fucking course it is. So Sora beats up the computer (laughs) (laughs) and accidentally some he just starts like mashing his face in the keyboard and somehow makes it show a picture of an old man. (gasps) What? So Mickey returns and tells them the man on the screen is Ansem the Wise. Oh my god. Oh my god. And they're like that's not ripped buff tan, dude. Are you ready to have your mind properly fried in a way that it's not been so far? 
Because right, it's brain. time for some exposition. Yes. So it turns out the Ansem that we defeated <laughs> in <laughs> spoilers in there again. The Ansem that we defeated in Kingdom Hearts 1 wasn't Ansem, but it was the heartless of the man in the portrait from before in Ansem's office. Wait, wait, wait. wait. It was the heartless, not a nobody. It was the heartless of the Well, so there were no nobodies yeah, yeah, in the yeah, last yeah, game. Yeah, so you, Ansem, yeah. Seeker of Darkness tan buff dude is the heartless of the man in the portrait in Ansem's office. That person in the portrait is not Ansem the Wise. That was one of Ansem's apprentices who, after becoming a heartless, stole Ansem's name. And what? Face. The real Ansem the Wise is currently missing. So, so the guy who did... The, so the real Ants and the Wise never experimented on children. No, he's he's still dead. <laughs> he's still well, dead. The, oh, so the Ansem reports the, are still the definitely the Ansem. The Ansem reports are still writ- written by Ansem. Oh fuck! Sorry, I've just from real. I, to- I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? I do not remember any of this, and I've just yeah, realized why I know this. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Um, but okay, all right. Yeah. So real Ansem is missing. Um, now. Mickey's been looking for him, uh, presumably because Anthony the Wise, he thinks, knows about the organization and their plans because he has such a connection to this. Now, Goofy, um, being the big, smart, beautiful man he is, activates his gigachad brain (laughs) and reasons that if fake Ansem became a Heartless, doesn't that mean there should be a nobody around here somewhere? (gasps) And Mickey's like, bro, yeah. And not only that, his nobody is the leader of Organization 13. And he has lightsabers, which is vaguely a spoiler, but that's fine. That's cool. So when we read the Ansem reports, and Ansem in the reports is... And we, we the Ansem reports, to clarify, don't fuck about here, that is Ansem the Wise writing that. Yes, and to be clear, only the Heartless calls itself Ansem. Only the Heartless stole Ansem's name. The Apprentice did not call himself Ansem. The nobody does not call himself Ansem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Only the Heartless for whatever fucking reason, calls himself Ansem. So Ansem the Wise, according to his reports, created an artificial heartless of himself. No. No. No, it was the... Oh, the- actually, the, okay. I thought this was a reveal for later. This is when it learnt, comes out that it wasn't ever Ansem the Wise who wrote those reports. Right, that was why I was like, don't fuck about with me here, because I my well, under- vague, on un- basic understanding is being crumbled slightly right now. I thought I thought that was a reveal later, but actually now that I think about uh, it, for context, Neil is rubbing his head and closing his <laughs> eyes, trying to figure out so, what's going on. The Ansem reports from Kingdom Hearts One mm. were written, not even actually by Heartless Ansem. They were written by the apprentice who would become Ansem, Seeker of Darkness, and unnamed nobody Ansem. Right. Changing the subject, Sora asks Mickey where Riku is, but Mickey's like, "Um, I can't tell you. Sorry." I don't know anything. He definitely knows. I don't know anything. No. Um, and Mickey tells Sora that we'll go together to find Riku and Kairi. And then an earthquake happens. And then an earthquake happens. <laughs> so you run outside. And thousands of Heartless and awesome. nobodies are about. Awesome. Um, this is one of the coolest parts of the series. Yep. Um, and they're all fighting each other. Maleficent is up on the cliffs and she's like trying to take back her castle. She's leaving the Heartless. And traveling further out, you're met by the the sight of even more than this. Like, it is literally a black sea of just Heartless. Very cool. And they're all marching on the castle. Um, And the Final Fantasy characters are trying to fight because, you know, they're the Restoration Committee and they're failing. Gotta save our restoration plans, I guess. (laughs) Mickey tries to send Sora and the others away. He's like, go to a a Disney World. I'll deal with this. (laughs) Um, But Sora, Sora doesn't have time for that shit. So he, of course, charges forward. Um, and, uh, s- s- just for the audience's sake, there are a couple scenes here that happened. They were added in the HD cut. I'm going to skip them oh, because okay. they are stupidly spoilery okay. for the later games. And I don't like I that they were added that. into this game. Sure. Yeah. Bring us back to it when um, you feel necessary. That's they fine. can, I'll, I'll go into them later, but oh. they don't feel, they don't add anything right now. And they just throw a bunch of names and plot points that you sh- shouldn't know about by now. And I don't like it. 
I well, again, the, the purpose of Lore Dump has always been that we, I mean, mainly Neil for this, because he knows nothing and I know little bits, um, goes in and experiences it the same way that a first-time player would f- from day one. See, so yeah. we're not, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Remix HD doesn't matter, exactly. we're not counting it. Yeah. Oh, I will get to that later. Um, anyway, uh, Sora fights Demix for some reason. He makes Dance Water Dance, uh, calls Sora a traitor, and then you kill him. He dies. Okay. Sora's How back did you on kill him? Just beat him to death with the keyblade. Yeah, pretty much. Do you know, I've wondered about this because it's not a sword. It's not got a sharp edge, but it has got the nasty. You know, imagine a key. It's got the little, Big, you know, sharp yeah, corners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you just beat your sort of bludgeoning someone to death with yeah. like a pipe with some sort of jagged. It's really quite brutal for a thirteen-year-old to have to do, isn't it? <laughs> what does Sora say? Is, is he like, oh my god, I've I've just killed a man, or is he no, like whatever? I, I, I straight up think he says something about how Demix was annoying after that. Wow. Um, well, and yeah. that explains the smile. <laughs> He's dead behind the eyes. Um, so yeah, uh, Sora's officially back on his murder train. <laughs> uh, and it's only going to go from here. Yay. Mickey shows up to help and y'all go to leave. But as you are, some heartless from the cliff above you knock a boulder from the cliff. And it's going straight towards Mickey. Goofy being the royal guard he is, pushes Mickey out of the way. Saving him, taking the boulder to the face. And fucking dies. <laughs> <laughs> I shit you not, they kill off Goofy. <laughs> Imagine if your kid comes in and goes, What is this you're playing, Dad? Is that Goofy? <laughs> <laughs> they like cry over his corpse and stuff. Yeah. Keep saying that. I'm music. like, yeah. this can't be happening. Sad music playing. Don't, don't, don't go, don't. Uh, Mickey's like, no, you you did this for me. It's my fault. It was, oh. it was, it was your job. <laughs> Mickey's, Mickey's like, we'll pay for this. And he fucking Yakuza style rips off his coat. Uh... <laughs> The, the, the Mickey nips are out again. <laughs> nah, it's, it's okay. He's got a shirt. Oh, um, and uh, because, of course, unfortunately, you don't have time to mourn, you leave Goofy's corpse by- behind to rot. <laughs> <laughs> no! I love it. Oh. This was... Neil, I'm going to straight up tell you right now, when I pitched to Chase... Lord Dump Kingdom Hearts, people have been asking for it. <laughs> Chase, you need to do the writing because I know very little about this. And then I was like, but I know just too much that I can't go in fresh. We need to bring Neil in. And this was the scene where I was like, I cannot, I cannot wait for Neil to experience the death of Goofy. <laughs> um, I'm so honored you thought of me. Legit. Yeah. This. Um, um, dead. Now, here's the thing. And they leave the body. Mm-hmm. For some... No. But here's the Look, thing. Sora's just killed a man. He's remember, like... remember what I told you about Death in Kingdom Hearts. We didn't see him sparkle in the light or darkness until his comes back. Oh, really? I want to see that. I want to see the creepy ass nobody version of Goofy. I know, it'd be great. And the only reason I just get the feeling that there might be something. Straight up, like ten minutes later, the only reason I put it there is because I literally just move past everything else. (laughs) Like the game stops for like fifteen minutes for them to mourn, and then it's like ten minutes after that he just appears. Oh, great! It is very funny. So you get to the bottom of the ravine, uh, are right in the belly of thousands and thousands of heartless, and they're just sitting there waiting. And the big bad, who we finally learn is named Zemnis, appears. Um, who we now know is not Ansem's nobody, he's Ansem's apprentice's nobody. Uh, which, I will give you a little fun thing, since you were able to deduce the X's in their name. Mm. If you take out X, what do the rest of those letters make? Okay. Mness. No. No. <laughs> we arrange them. Yeah. Yeah. It's Ansem. And seeing him, Mickey finally re- realizes where he knew him. And I technically already said this, but long ago, Mickey went to seek Ansem's advice, which was mentioned, of course, back in the Ansem reports, um, where a student of Ansem approaches, wanting to discuss an, appa- an experiment he proposed. Right. Uh, Ansem pr- forbids it, telling him to forget this talk of doors in the heart of all worlds. And this student's name is Xehanort. 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 Another X name that surprisingly... You can't take the X out of, sadly. It's the only one you can't take the X out of. Otherwise you get... Oh, no, there's one Nort that you can't take... I don't... I... Hey, Nort. Hey, eh, hey, Nort. Eh, Nort. Eh, Nort. Eh, Nort. <laughs>
But no. So the student who would ultimately become Xemnas and Ansem, Seeker of Darkness, was named Xehanort. And Xehanort is the one who wrote the Ansem reports. He is also the one who was the portrait in Ansem's lab. So Xehanort is the one that sacrificed children. Did, if you so come back and say Ansem sacrificed still children? sacrificed children. <laughs> yeah. um, I wish I couldn't, but Ansem also sacrificed children. <laughs> I keep oh, waiting for him to be redeemed like it was never him no. all along. I love the game. So, yeah, no. I, granted, uh, granted, uh, Xehanort <laughs> sacrificed way more children. Because basically, and this is a kind of a spoiler for later, basically Ansem was sacrificing children to research hearts and ultimately put a kibosh on his research. He's like, I can't do this anymore. Um, and then Xehanort basically picked it back up oh, and right. sacrificed mm-hmm. even more children. And then he wrote the reports. Cool. Pretending to be Ansem. Or is it just that we've always assumed that these notes were written by Ansem and Zaynor didn't pretend? They're called the Ansem reports, and I think that people assumed they had been written by Ansem, mm. but it, it it wasn't Zaynor as Ansem, Seeker of Darkness at that point. It was just Zaynor as Apprentice Zaynor. It's just no more of fucking with us, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as much. usual, yeah. Um, so Mickey runs off to fight Xemnas, and you literally have to fight a thousand Heartless. There is a counter in everything. Oh, awesome. And you need to fight a thousand Heartless. It's very cool. Luckily, you do do a ass load of damage, so you kind of cleave through them like butter. Yeah. It's very satisfying. It's arguably, in my opinion, one of the best moments of the entire franchise. Not- Some of the boss fights are, like, better, but, like, it really is, like, the, oh, oh, I see why yeah. like people like Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. great. So, when you reach Damnus, Sora tells him to tell him where Kyrie and Riku are. Why would he know that? <laughs> Who's he going um, to? Xemnas. Yeah, he goes to Xemnas. He's like, where are Kyrie and Riku? And he's like, what? Who? <laughs> yeah. like, Is he like yelling at something from like a cliff above <laughs> while Mickey's fighting him? He, he, he does pretty Scared much, me. He does pretty much go like, who the fuck is Kyrie? But Riku, why ain't you asking the king? Mm. And then he teleports away. Oh. Um, but of course, Mickey's like, I don't want to tell you anything. And he yeets himself through and oh. the Zekor's <laughs> portal. Before um, Sora can ask him anything. I'll never tell, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, he's dead, he's in my basement. I'll die before I talk. <laughs> so, before they leave, Axel appears. And he tells them that they're falling for, for Xemnas' trap. He's using Sora to destroy the Heartless. Because every Heartless slain by the Keyblade releases a captive heart. And the organization wants those hearts. Uh, all of them. All of them. Like a, thou- a million hearts. A right? million hearts. So basically they're using uh, Sora as the reaper that is harvesting hearts for them. Wow. Yeah. Uh, another organization, 13 member, shows up, forcing Axel to run off. Axel, like... Is is so rest in crazy? peace, whoever's just come up on my screen. <laughs> I know. Uh, so, so Axel runs off. Uh, he tells Sora that Axel... Not to worry, because Axel w- will receive the maximum punishment. Um... And then tells him as well that they are taking very good care of Kyrie. Um, ooh, all right. Ooh. That okay. Sora begs him to take him to uh, Kyrie, uh, causing him to question how important Kyrie is to Sora. To prove it, Cora straight up, Cora? <laughs> yeah. Sora straight up kowtows down to like almost kissing Syax's feet. Oh. Uh, trying to get uh, Kyrie back. Um, Syax, of course, like. <laughs> well, nah. But if you're angry at me, you know you can go turn that into a heartless. <laughs> yeah. Um, where he tells us that the can hearts I offer you one of these. <laughs> where he tells us that the hearts released gather in darkness until they weave together to make Kingdom Hearts. No, but wait, hold on. <laughs> wait, no, when no. they find Kingdom Hearts, the what? organization will truly exist. And I thought well, Kingdom Hearts was a Kingdom place yeah, through the King- door where, yeah. which contained all the light, the heart of light through through yeah. the darkness. Kingdom Hearts was. So, so they're trying to, they're trying to make a new Kingdom Hearts? Or there, is this access to the Kingdom Hearts that we've we're, already we're seen? They're trying to make Kingdom Hearts, man. Don't question it. Chase, what? Chase! <laughs> Jeez. What is Kingdom Hearts? I asked this in game one and I got a satisfying answer. Kingdom Hearts <laughs> is the heart of all worlds and all and the progenitor of all hearts. So it's the it's the door that we saw. No, that was the door to Kingdom Hearts. So they're trying to what do you mean they're trying to make it? It's already there. They're trying to make Kingdom Hearts. Don't they're trying to door to get to it. They're trying to make Kingdom Hearts. Did they blow up Kingdom Hearts? They, they are wanted? trying to make <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right, keep going. Next. <laughs> it's the name of the game. We need to make it. Maleficent ain't about them trying to steal mm. her kingdom hearts. It's hers. Oh. And so she shows up and she fights off Syax and lets Sora run away. 
or she tries because she gets overwhelmed. Oh. And then the Heartless surrounds Sora. Uh, he quest- um, And at this point, he's now like, oh shit, I can't let them have Kingdom Hearts, which means I can't use the Keyblade. Mm. Because if I use the Keyblade, I'll release hearts and invertedly, and I will oh. make Kingdom Hearts. So he's okay. like, I can't use it. And he, uh, but luckily, Maleficent, not fully out, does rescue them, pulling them into the realm of darkness. Oh, Maleficent teamed up with the team for a bit, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Awesome. Um, just just a, a brief redemption moment. So in the darkness, though, Arobi leaves Sora a gift before telling a port- teleporting away. In the box is a sea salt ice cream and a picture of the Twilight Town gang Roxas included. That feels like a bit of a kick in the balls, I'm not going to lie. I, f- I feel like someone's kicked me in the balls. Um, that's a bit much. <laughs> Unnecessary. <laughs> like, so that's, no, but like they had to go to Twilight Town, buy a sea salt ice cream, make sure it was kept yeah. cold, <laughs> put it in the box, nick a photograph, and then fr- put, like generate a photograph because the data escape doesn't have photographs of Roxas in it, so they had to like Photoshop that shit. No, this was a meticulous no, plan. No, no. no, to be very clear, this is the photo... That they took in the datascape. The original photo that Roxas oh, and Gang took. The nobody in the stole. The, the, the yeah. Dusk stole. Oh, fuck. That's yeah. even worse. My God. So, yeah, like. Yeah, my this God. is the original photo. They got it from the datascape. This was like. This is plotted. Because guess what? Is... We're not done with the datascape. Yay. Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, of course. Uh, for, so, for some reason, Sora knows the guy's name. He knows it's Roxas. He doesn't know why he knows it's Roxas. Cool. Um, but he. Uh, Takes a little lick of the ice cream, throws it in the air, turns it into a keyhole, and gummy ship time. <laughs> it really is like anything is a keyhole. This bottle cap is a fucking keyhole. Like, <laughs> yeah, yes! oh, we did it. Things that are like important. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. So, <laughs> back in the organization chair room, Syax told Goofy, tells, did you eat the ice cream? Oh yeah. Bad luck, Goofy. It's it's inside you now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Donald, grab him. <laughs> So, back in the organization's chair room, Syax tells them that he's told Sora the truth, and Zemnis sends the remaining organization members out to challenge Sora, giving us a reason to go back to the Disney worlds. Do we get a sense of how many are left? On average, I know you probably wouldn't have an immediate number to hand, but, like, are we talking 10, 5, 11? There's 9? 9 left, okay. I have now written, second half, baby! (laughs) Oh, are we going back to Disney Worlds? Yeah, and I pretty much skipped the plot. <laughs> in the gummy ship, Sora questions if it was Riku in the rope who left him the picture. <gasps> He's got a feeling. Also, Goofy convinces Sora to keep using the Keyblade so you can actually have a game to play. Uh, sure, so, yeah. Sora got over that dilemma pretty quick. <laughs> anyway, um, because plot reason... The paths between the worlds are locked again. Oh, oh no. Why? Oh, why so you've got to go to the worlds and, and lock. And, no, but why did it happen? Uh, it just happened. Yeah. It's padding. So you got to go back <laughs> and unlock some more paths between worlds. And you get a choice of Mulan, Bell, and Pirates. So we'll go to Mulan first. Roby's running about and he has Riku's sword, but he runs away. Um, also, Zigbar's in the Imperial City. That's literally the only thing I put there. Um, yeah, yeah, he's important. Remember Zigbar. Okay. He's my favorite organization member. I love him. Okay. Um, he's also, it was cool. Uh, do some shit, and the emperor actually did meet Riku. Um, but it's like, why is he in organization robes? Is he in the organization? <gasps> yeah. But we know why though, because well, he. We, yeah. <laughs> we, we know why, but Sora is like, is he in the organization? Um, yeah, okay, anyway, go defeat a Heartless boss, and the Emperor tells you that Riku warned them off against the impending Heartless, oh. but said that Sora would come to save the day. Aww. So Riku's like proper good guy now. So, eh, he's, he's probably good, but he might still be in the organization, Sora doesn't know. But we know he does, he's, we know he's, we okay. Know. <laughs> anyway, onwards to Belle, she wants to have her dance with the Beast, oh. but Arobi interrupts them, steals the rose, and Beast tells you it's Zuldin, the guy from before, oh I'll my god. Him. Um, Wait, so what's his deal? He likes he like yeah, spears. Spears. Okay. spears, Monty. Um, is that it? <laughs> it it's pretty it, clear. It, it, he tells Sora, we want Kingdom Hearts. And um, you kill him. <laughs> On a bridge. <laughs> just the way that he's mid-sentence. And once again, Sora, by this point, is just kicking him to death. And I'm just like, Sora cry continues. tears coming yeah. out of his adolescent face. I remember Where is Kyrie? <laughs> fucking tell me. I don't Sora. remember her face anymore. Sora, he's dead. Where is she? 
I very vividly remember. Um, I have very vivid yeah. memories of thinking this heart was really. This uh, battle was really hard. As a child. Apparently not. He's fucking dead. Give you a goofy special. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Back in the gummy ship, after you've completed two worlds, Chip and Dale, uh, they, they give you a little message like, um, we've detected a weird cloudy reading on your map. And that's kind of it. Um, oh, that's, in- that's just super important, I guess. Sure. <laughs> Back, to later. Back in the Caribbean. Back to the killing. Cursed pirates are back for some reason. Also, Luxor, who's a gambling man, stole the medallions. Oh, like the Luxor. Uh, a couple of mini-bosses, a lot of shenanigans and nobodies, uh, and you leave. Oh, we don't kill this one. No, you don't kill this one. Cool, okay. So, so his blood loss is I mean, he's just... <laughs> Well, Luxord is crying with relief. He's pissed himself. He's curled up in the voice, heard what happened to the others. Luxord. And he's gone, why me? And just wander off. Luxord, Luxord kind of creates the... Luxord kind of creates a nobody to steal the medallions and then fucks off. Luxord's going to spend the rest of his life looking over his shoulder. <laughs> Why did he let me go? We very quickly taken arguably one of the, the purest characters, characters in all of gaming. People like people get Sora tattooed on their fucking thigh because they think he's just like the purest boy. And no, I don't give a fuck. The guy's a serial killer, and we need to address it once and for all. <laughs> anyway, next. Um, Back in the gummy ship, the fuzzy reading is still cloudy, but it's stronger. Woo! Oh, we're padding oh, for time. Also, by-, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, you can also finish Atlantica now. You've gotten all the you've gotten all the magic spells needed to advance that plot. Um, Wait, so after our massive battle with the Heartless and the murder of Organization 13, we can, rhythm games. We can go back and do a bit of a under sing song. <laughs> you, 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 yeah, you, you go do Under the Sea as a rhythm game and. Um... <laughs> this game is fucking chaos. And I've remembered none of it except for Roxas. And Roxas is so far beautiful um, and amazing, but the most uninteresting bit. <laughs> also, suddenly, for some reason, after that, you also start getting the movie plot. She uh, she loses her legs to a rhythm game. Um, I mean, she loses her fin, gets legs, meets Prince Eric. Uh, Eric runs his ship through Ursula. All that good stuff. It's all rhythm games. <laughs> God damn it. Fuck it. Shite. Uh, move, move Next. I love, anyway. I love this. This is bonkers. This is so good. This is like... This is what I needed. Yeah. Okay. This is woken me up. <laughs> um, so you complete more Disney Worlds and the fuzzy reading is starting to turn into a castle. Oh. With the nobody symbol on it. That oh. can't be good. Also, there's two Twilight well, Towns the now. the Dick and Balls symbol. Yeah. There's right, two okay. Twilight Towns. There's two Twilight Towns now. Data and normal? Maybe... I love how um, it was, we'll never see this place again and we get fucking two of them back. we don't have time to deal with Twilight Town because it's Pride Land's time. Sora wants to be a lion again. Oh. Scar's ghost is running around and it turns out it's just a metaphor for Simba's depression. So make him a happy boy, kill the heartless boss, release those hearts, Sora, you bitch boy. Yeah. Um, Next. <laughs> and, <Play Simba. laughs> and then you make one last stop in Hollow Bastion where we go deal with... Uh, before we go to deal with Twilight Town, the MCP is back, and it took over the computer again. It's creating Heartless in the world, so Sid's making the MCP eradication program. Go inside, help Tron deploy it. Once you come out, Tron has taken control of the system. He lets you see what Hollow Bastion used to look like. It was sparkly. Wow. Merlin wonders when it got stuck with such a horrible name as Hollow Bastion, and the world takes on its proper name, Radiant Garden. Lovely. 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 Yes. Cool. Anyway, Lovely. I have titled the section Disney Bullshit over. Back to the plot. Hey! Whoa! So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Twilight Town time. Uh, Twilight Town appeared, and we're finally going to go deal with it. So, uh, Goofy reminds them of that picture that they found. Um, so, they go looking for the mansion. There, they find Hainer, Pence, and Olette fucking unconscious. Oh. They went looking for Kyrie, but the nobodies attacked. Oh. Or the Heartless. I... Put the heartless, but I feel like I meant to put the nobodies. I don't really know. They are pure, and we need to protect them at all really costs. They, they don't know uh, what they're doing. So remember how earlier Olette was like, this is really weird that you have a wallet and it matches mine. Well, that's because she handcrafted the wallet, so there should only be one in existence. So okay. the fact that there is a second one, as well as the fact there's now two marbles from the very unique and exclusive Strife Trophy that are Sora's, Sora and Rox's blue one, confirms their theory that there is a second Twilight Town. Which they oh. which they have suspected for some time for reasons. Because uh, they have a second of this unique wallet and a second of this unique marble. Um, 
For some reason, the Twilight Town gang's like, well, there must be a portal to an alternate Twilight Town in the mansion. Um, that is a leap. I know it's a correct <laughs> leap, but it is a leap. <laughs> I do not remember how they come to this. Um, I've just put that it's a lucky yes. Sure, yeah. Um, and I, I think it's because they say that things go missing, and for some reason their only logical explanation is that there must be a second Twilight Town where these missing things go to. And they suspect that one of those missing things is Kyrie. Oh. So she's. That does seem like a leap, doesn't it? Yeah, but you know what? I'd rather that than fifty minutes of running around Twilight Town fighting Heartless. So yeah, sure, fuck it, well so, done. The king. Of, so suddenly the king appears. Oh my god! And he knows where his little wise is. He's in the organization stronghold. Oh my god! Oh, great. Wow, Mickey, you're actually being useful. Congrats. <laughs> uh, but Mickey wants to know why the fuck they're in Twilight Town. Sora tells him that Riku told him to come here and demands that Mickey tell him where Riku is. But Mickey made a promise to Riku so he can't tell him anything. <laughs> what a shame. Also, there's probably a doorway to darkness here for some reason. I don't know. Riku told Mickey and, you know, he's the darkness expert, so we trust him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so. Sure. Everyone goes in and finds the computer in the basement and Pence shows off his uber hacker skills by needing the password. And the password is... Anson the Wise's favorite ice cream flavor, sea salt ice cream. Yeah, okay. silly, fuck it, sure. But yeah, okay. <laughs> sure. Um, so, uh, putting the password Wait, in. this is Anson the Wise's computer, so the apprentice never had access to this computer. No, this one in the basement is the actual Anson the Wise's oh, computer. Oh, awesome, awesome, okay, awesome. real stuff. Okay. Um, that opens a portal, which they go through and end up in the same room but with the computer smashed. <gasps> oh. It's the data twilight town. No. But wait, if the computer smashed, how did it get back? Because the portal's still on. Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but also it doesn't even matter because uh, they walk over to the next room and there's a portal to the dark realm. G oh, we're off to the dark realm. All right, sure. Yeah, so, okay. uh, but before they can go in it, they get attacked by nobody's in the path. And don't worry, though, because Axel BB saves us. Yay. Yay. Hi, Axel. What well, this boy. Those, uh, his eyes look really weird, though. <laughs> yeah. I, re I really do. I think Axel's quite cool. Mm. I'm glad that you think he's cool. Yeah. Um, or at least he tries to before uh, he gets yeeted and we try to and we have to save him. Uh, he tells us that Kyrie got away from him and Syax got her. More nobodies show up and surround you, so you fight with Axel. But in a show-off move, he shoots lots of fire and literally kills himself doing it. So I'm glad you liked it, because he's dead now. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, it's just been hard sometimes over the last day. You know, it's just... <laughs> um, as he's dying, Sora's like, why'd you kidnap Kyrie? And he's like... What? No, why did you kill yourself? <laughs> you are no. of glory. No. Is you there want... anyone you want us to speak to? Your family? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he wants to know why Axel kidnapped Kyrie. And Axel's like, it's because I wanted to see Roxas. Roxas made him feel like he had a heart. Oh. And Sora made him feel the same. Oh. And Sora's like, where the fuck is Kyrie? <laughs> <laughs> I need to tell you about Roxas. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Axel opens a portal to send them away and crumbles to dust. Immolated himself. In the organization chair room, they're talking about how Axel just died. Oh. Syax seems sad about it. But Zemnis is like, he touched Sora's heart. And that may... And that it may cause him to awaken. Ooh. Ooh. And then we come to, at long last, the world that never was. It's the Skyscraper City! Okay. Finally! Emerging from the portal, we find Sora in this Skyscraper City that we saw Roxas in so long ago. Um, And there's a castle in the distance, and above <clears throat> it, a heart-shaped moon. Oh. Um, Is that Kingdom Hearts? That's Kingdom Hearts. Oh, it was actually. Oh, that's, shit. That's I fucking nailed it. All right, okay. Also, I will also say mm -hmm. the the heart moon motif, that's how Kingdom Hearts appears in as for the remainder of the series. Right. If you ever see Kingdom Hearts for the remainder of the series, it looks like this. So when they were trying to... In Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts right. 1. So, to be 100% Oh, right, so it's not it's like the right. door would lead to that moon. So, they like appear on that moon if they went through the door, no? Is this a whole thing you were going to explain later if it is just wait, it's fine. Um, I have no idea. This is kind of the same Kingdom Hearts as Kingdom Hearts 1, kind of. Okay. And I'll leave it at that because 
until we get to stuff that reveals later, it's too difficult to explain it. Chase, that's, that's fine. As long as by the end of Lore Dump, I understand what Kingdom Hearts is, I'll be happy. I mean, I've told you, it's the progenitor of all hearts. I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's all that we it do. doesn't make any... That's not anyway. tangible. <laughs> um, and I will note, um, this next segment, it wasn't in the original Kingdom Hearts 2. Right. Um, and whilst I've left out all other uh, additions that were added into the HD 2.5 Final Remix version, this one's just really fucking good. <laughs> so I needed it there. Sure, okay. okay. What is it? Um, Sora walks into the courtyard... The one that we might recognize as where Riku fought Roxas during Roxas' flashbacks. And suddenly, a hooded Robi appears before Sora, summoning the Oblivion Keyblade. He strikes out at Sora and reality shifts to find you atop Sora's Station of Awakening, of course representative of his heart. The figure, now wielding two iconic Keyblades, engages you in a battle underscored by very slow, quiet, sad music. Uh, uh, it's, it's a battle in Sora's heart as Roxas begs for control. As he like begs to get out and have his life back. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Um, you defeat him, uh, but of course in the cutscene the battle is raging on. Sora asks who he's in, questioning if this is Riku. The figure tells Sora that he defeated a Riku once, which I have put in quotes, Lamau, no you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Um okay. and the figure once knows why he chose Sora, but quickly understands why as the battle continues. He hits the keyblade from Sora's hand, ready to land the final blow. But Sora summons it back, getting a better, uh, getting the better of and defeating the figure. Um, Keyblade's gone. The figure walks through Sora, showing a memory from Roxas's past, in front of the mansion gates where Xemnas founds him. He takes Sora's name, uh, letters floating in the sky, and rearranges the letters. Of course, adding the X. Um, just keep those X's important in mind. Um, and bestows the name Roxas upon him. Hmm. Uh, Flash, we see Roxas in his organization rose, robes with Axel on top of the clock tower. Axel tells him soon they won't be able to talk like this anymore, to which a Roxas questions if it's time for him to go back where he belongs. Axel questions something Naminé said, wondering if they all truly have hearts, or if that's just wishful thinking. Roxas doesn't know, but feels that Sora will have the answer they're looking for. They share a sea salt ice cream as they reminisce on how, on the day Roxas got his name, and they met. They sit there watching the sunset. Twilight Town is their home. We went on so many adventures with Hainer, Pence, and Alette, and Axel knows that we'll see them again. Aww. Roxas says that Sora's waiting for him, tells Axel to take care, and fades as Axel sheds a tear. Oh. Back at the station, Roxas falls, his hood dropping. He turns back into Sor he turns back to Sora, telling him that he makes a good other, and Sora reappears in the cut in the courtyard. Oh, oh, it's say such it a good fight, Monty. Say it. Well, I love this. <laughs> We're going around in circles. I cry, you cry. <laughs> I cry, you cry. Everyone <laughs> cries. Sorry, yes, Aww. you did that, and I was like, we're not going around in circles. This is really poignant. This uh, is no, yeah, yeah. is it's one of the best parts of the series. Yeah, one of the best fights in the series. That's awesome. Fucking loved it. Also, yeah. um, I will tell you now, uh, because I think it's really cool. The Oathkeeper and Oblivion Keyblades are created from Roxas's memories sleeping. I mean, uh, Sora's memories sleeping within, um. Rocks his, his heart with the Oathkeeper Keyblade representing his memories of Kyrie. Note that you can see that the keychain on it is um his is the charm that she gave him, and um Oblivion representing his memories of Riku, oh, which also is why in it. the fight with Riku he throws. And you've got the kind of bat wing on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the hand that is the, really yeah. good. Oh, it's so, so good. good. Also, of course, it being called Oathkeeper and representing Kyrie because it's all about the oath that he made mm -hmm. to return to Kyrie. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> back inside the castle, we see Kyrie in a jail cell with Pluto, but she's rescued by Naminé via a dark portal. As their hands touch, we see a large burst of light, which Sora is able to see from outside the castle. He turns that bitch of light into a keyhole and unlocks a path to the castle. Oh, I really feel like we're... No, I... no, don't clap that. I feel like we're properly undervaluing keyholes by this point. Sora is just turning the concept of light into a keyhole. Yeah. From ice cream to just air. <laughs> light. Oh, sure. So, okay. as Naminé and Kairi flee, they're stopped by Syax. However, the hooded figure with Riku's sword appears from before Sa comes to save them. Syax is confused, thinking Roxas took care of him. The figure shoots a Kamehameha at Syax, forcing him to flee. 
What? So it's all the what? Before chasing him through his escape portal, Kyrie stops him thinking it's Riku. She pulls down her... It, the hood and reveals it's Ansem oh. back again. Oh, so we thought it was Riku, but it's actually Ansem. It's Ansem. Great. Oh. Major kids. Oh, we like him. Meanwhile, <laughs> so, no, we don't Sora actually. Makes his way through the castle. <laughs> he runs into Sags, who tells them that their Kingdom Hearts is nearly complete and that the organization doesn't need him anymore. They only they only need one more helping. He summons Heartless, which Sora is hesitant to fight because he doesn't want to finish their Kingdom Hearts. But Kairi shows up. She tries to do a thing, but is overwhelmed by the Heartless, oh. causing Ansem to rescue her. Great. But in a shock twist, Ansem gives her a Keyblade. Oh, oh. Kairi has a Keyblade. Hooray. What does she do? What does she, she do? Does she does she fight things with it? Yeah, she fights off the Heartless. Does she actually? Yeah, she good for her. The okay. Her you, her and Ansem, who seem to be working together, are. Does that um, not give the 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 troops and the the last of the kind of hearts they need? Oh yeah, I feel yeah. like we shouldn't be giving. Oh, it, it fully does. <laughs> also, uh, I feel like we're just handing out keyblades by this point. What's happening? Oh, are they like uh, lollipop sticks? Also, we'll get to that in a later. Game. Okay. Anyway, also Pete and Maleficent are here for some fucking reason. They they want the castle. They're they're they're. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Maleficent just wants castles. <laughs> She's like literally. They're here and they're like, well, we 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 couldn't get Hollow Bastion. We need a different castle. This one will do. My God. Um, elsewhere in the castle, Mickey finds. Diz! And he has a strange machine! Diz is the mum, Mummy Man. Mummy Man! Have you heard of the and Mummy Man? And it's the machine from... No, it, it's just it's just a strange machine. It's not the one from Kingdom Hearts 1. Oh, it's not your important one. Okay, it's okay. not the important one. It's just a, a weird machine. Diz removes his Mummy Mask, revealing that... It's Ansem the Wise, baby! Cool. It was Ansem the whole time! Wow. Yeah. Um, so, so Wow. So, let's have a little recap here mentally. The stuff that Diz has been doing is some pretty fucked up stuff. Yeah. Torturing a nobody in a date escape to yeah. the sake of bringing back Sora. Yeah. There was no way to Do bring back Sora without it. He's used to killing children, so yeah. just torturing him. It's, it's a minor step up. Mm. So he's not like... My question is, how am, I, how am I meant to feel about Diz at this point? About Ansem the Wise? Uh, am I meant to be great. like, he's on our team? Or am I meant to be like, I don't like this guy much? He's on our team, but you're not really meant to think he's a good guy right so um obviously he conform he, he confirms to mickey that Xemnas is the nobody of xanor blah blah, blah 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 and he feels responsible for dealing with him um ansem the wise tells mickey that riku's been helping him but is now with his friends mickey reveals that riku left him because he was struggling to control ansem and that somehow that caused him to take on ansem's appearance the Ansem was Riku! Wait, so every time we've seen Ansem in this game, it's been Riku? It's been Riku. So Ansem at the start, where he was standing with him with Diz over the computer, and it's he's like, Riku. oh, I've got my money bag. That's Riku. That's Riku. When he gave Kyrie a Keyblade, that was Riku. That was Riku. We, so Ansem's Secret Darkness is not, is not is not alive as far as we no, know. No. He's just... It's just Riku. What, so bad. why has Riku got his face? Uh, because Riku's still struggling with to control the darkness in his heart. Right. And... Oh, of course, and it, was, and it was Ansem in the first game that kind of took advantage of that darkness. But Ansem hasn't yeah. controlled Riku and at any point. It's just almost like he like looks no, like he, him. He looks like Riku, but he's not being controlled by him. I do he not looks like Ansem. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, Riku goes to leave, but Sora stops him. And at this point, Riku still thinks that it is Ansem. Right. Um, saying, I don't like you, but you know, despite everything, thank you for saving Kyrie. Um, and Ansem go, uh, goes to leave, but Kyrie stops him, calling him Riku. And Sora goes, what? Riku? <laughs> oh. What does Riku say? Wow. Uh, so that's that's no. why made, that's why he made Mickey promise not to tell Sora anything is right. because he didn't want Sora to know that he was like this. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to see Sora oh. again until he yeah looked like himself again. That's kind of sad, that's like in a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. Poor Riku's like, I'm dealing with a lot of shit right now, Sora, and I'm sorry. I just want to, yeah, 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 give me some time. Sorry, I help you, but... Riku tells him that until the battle's over, he needs the power of darkness, and he can't turn back to his proper form. So he looks like Ansem because he's using the power of darkness. Why was he blind at the start? Do we learn oh, that? We'll, we'll get back to that. Okay. Um, <laughs> elsewhere, um, we learn that uh, Ansem the Wise's machine is meant to turn Kingdom Hearts into data. So he fires it at the moon... Don't Why? ask how it does that. It just does. Okay. <laughs> sure. On the way to meet up with them, Sora uh, kills Luxord and Syax. 
Yeah, me. <laughs> Wait, they locked so did he let go earlier? <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Wait a minute. He's back. He's back. No. Uh, oh. I missed it earlier. You killed Zigbar at one point. What? <laughs> I I fully skipped over that. Wait, so Zora's killed three members like back to back. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Fuck me. All right. I, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, all of them call all of them call him Roxas. Zora's like, what's a Roxas? <laughs> after the battle with Syax, before he uh, dies, dies. Sora asks Riku. No, this is after he dies. Sora asks Riku why everyone keeps calling him Roxas, where it is finally revealed to him officially, and this is officially where it's revealed that Roxas is Sora's nobody. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, who was created when Sora released his heart back in Kingdom Hearts One. Cool, no problem. Back in the machine. <laughs> uh, back in the machine. Oh shit! It's starting to explode. Oops. Oh. Uh, for reasons, uh, because yeah, of course it does. Yeah. Um, before it does, though, Sora shows up just in time, giving Ansem one final chance to apologize to Roxas. Oh. Also, while the machine's exploding and Ansem's trying to contain it, Zemnis shows up just to fucking mock Ansem. Um, this guy's such a nothing villain. He just keeps appearing to be about. Yeah. I'm here with my lightsabers. See, All right. It's weird because I'm not doing a good job. He is one of the better villains in the series. Because he has the whole, like, nobody plot line of, uh, wanting to be whole. I feel like Luxord, or whatever his name is, does have more screen time than Xemnas for so far. I think he means Zigbar, but also yes. No, I'm talking about Gambling Man, who Sora let live. <laughs> He's had more screen time so far than Xemnas has. But he has <laughs> can he? How? Um, Ansem, Ansem talks about how, despite how, how much research they've done on the heart, nobody truly understands the heart. Oh... And then Ansem fucking blows up in a heart tornado. What? What? <laughs> Excuse me? His machine explodes and it releases all the data hearts and they kind of skitter skitter uh, into darkness and um, Ansem explodes. Well, he explodes when, like, when the machine blows him up? Yeah. Is he dead? dead? Yeah. Why? No. But we didn't. What? No. Why did he call himself Diz? <laughs> I'm rewinding so much here. Why Diz? Um, what does that mean? Because I mean, I know it for a fact it was a cat. It's a capital D, lowercase I, capital Z, right? <laughs> Is it like door into zone? We'll get there. Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> no, shite. All right, sure. Yeah, that no problem. Such a pain. We'll get there. You blew up. Right? Um. Right. Yeah. So uh, he he blew up. Hearts rained down from the sky following the explosion, causing Heartless to begin being born at the base of the castle. No. Oh. Um, also, Riku looks like himself again. Oh, yeah. Yay! Yay. Uh, with the burst of light from the exploding data cannon dispelling his cloak of darkness. The fake Kingdom Hearts, <laughs> um, is starting to deteriorate and a bajillion Heartless are attacking the castle. So, Riku now, Yaksa pulls off his dark coat. Ooh. He's in his cool new outfit. And they go <laughs> to take out the last member of the organization. Anyhow, on the way, the group is nearly overrun run by Heartless, but they're saved by, by Maleficent, who wants them to do with Xemnas for her so that she can have the castle. Give her a Great. bloody castle. She's, she's, yeah, she's, yeah, earned, she's earned it. Yeah, give her a castle. Final battle. Does she not have her Sleeping Beauty castle? Atop the castle, <laughs> Xemnas mourns the loss of Kingdom Hearts, saying how he needs to start over. He commands the wielders of the Keyblade to gather him more hearts. Um... And causing Sora, Mickey, and also, now Riku, who has a Keyblade! Hey, wh wait, why? Um, oh, I guess he's just giving Keyblades, so fuck it, I guess he can summon them? Yeah, well, so, <laughs> we'll get into this later. Riku could always summon a Keyblade. Xemnas asks why they hate the darkness, but Mickey's like, they don't. We don't. It's just scary. Oh, fuck he me. does straight up just say, it's just scary. Huh? Um, but they accept we don't like the other here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but they accept it Very because well the light and the dark <laughs> must remain in balance. Mm -hmm. Xemnas rephrases the question, then asking why, if they accept darkness, they loathe those teetering on its edge. This causes Sora to go on a little racist rant, to be honest, Wait, about, about, about how pretty much nobody's don't deserve rights. Fuck off, seriously. And the ba he straight up goes on this you, whole rant. You, you, you've you just had this whole journey about your nobody. <laughs> I know. He straight up goes on this whole rant about how, like, nobody's don't even exist, and they don't get to determine anybody's fate, and they don't 
deserve hearts. Well, well, this whole game has been building up around your nobody's tragic journey I to know, bring you literally. back. It's like a whole thing. Yeah, fuck um, you, Sora, you psychopath. <laughs> you fucking serial killer. Why are people saying this is a pure child? Um, All I've learned through two is that also, this guy's fucking nuts. As you can see now, uh, Zemnis is now a Sith Lord. He deals, he, he uh, has dual red lightsabers. Yeah, I was gonna say, would you rather yeah. have a Keyblade or the two lightsabers? The I two lightsabers every single time. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> fuck the Keyblades. I don't care so, anymore. Yeah. You... That cloak is really Fight cool. Him. He looks like a male Cruella de Vil with fly sabers. Phase, <laughs> phase one down, Zemnis draws That's on the cute. anger and rage of the fake Kingdom Hearts going inside it. A doorway opens to this Kingdom Hearts, just like the one in the first game. Yay, okay. And the final battle. This isn't a data door, is it? No, it's it's a door into Kingdom Hearts. Cool. And it's the same door to light that we saw in Kingdom Hearts 1. What, what happens if you step through the door? What, what do you see? You go into Kingdom Hearts. But do you see, do you see like a moon? We're on, out, like, we're on, no, out, we're no, on no, out at 11 now. We're yeah, but I need to know. We're like, inside the moon, my dude. What? I don't know what this means. I don't understand either. Oh, just please. Let's just finish. The okay. three Keyblade wielders raise their Keyblades in unison, unlocking the door to Kingdom Hearts. Wait, Riku, oh, Kairi, and Sora? No, 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 no. Riku, Mickey, and Sora. But Kairi has one too. But Kairi's one too. Why is she out? Kairi's fucking about. This is about, fucking so ludicrous. <laughs> oh, it's happening. We're fighting Darth Vader. <laughs> 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 Kingdom um, Hearts of Light. <laughs> so the three enter into a distorted version of the world that never was. That's oh, under God. Zemnis's control. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. But of course they all walk in, and then the door closes and it locks Mickey and Kyrie out, so that Kyrie can't do anything, and also uh, Mickey can't be there. Yeah. So that way we go. Oh, we have Sora and Riku uh, fighting together. And don't forget Donald and Goofy. Oh, sure, I yeah. Could okay. Be. Yeah, <laughs> literally, yeah, literally, I forgot about him. Oh, oh, oh right. actually, yeah. I, I do think they get locked out as well now that I say that. Oh, thank God. So, um, <laughs> so, in the world, Xemnas has turned the castle into a giant mech with a dragon. Wow. And he's sat as a big suit of armor on a throne on its head. This is like the boat of this game. In the world, uh, you make a mech dragon, he's on top. Uh, kill the dragon, phase two. Back outside Kingdom Hearts, Sora tries to explain the heart to Xemnas. He tries to do my job and explain what a heart Oh, he does the handsome thing, where it's like, Kingdom Hearts is always light and hearts and uh, hearts are good. Shit. No, 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 because yeah. Xemnas is like, I don't understand emotion, I don't understand hearts. Because Ansem thinks that heart, or excuse me, Xemnas thinks that hearts are just rage and suffering. Sora tries to appeal to his prior self, asking if he remembers, but Xemnas don't have time for that and teleports away. Right. With the castle falling apart, Riku tries to open a path to escape, but he can't summon dark portals anymore because he's not a denizen of the dark. He's fully in the light. Luckily, <laughs> a ghost form of Nomne appears, opening a portal. <laughs> fucking why? But nobody's able to see her except for Sora and Kairi. Oh, good. Nomine tells Sora that they finally got to meet again like they promised. Oh, but of course, oh. Sora doesn't remember that. Oh. However... Roxas remembers that coming out of Sora as a Force Ghost. Oh, nice. Um, I, I love that we're both just like uh, Roxas, <laughs> Roxas appears. Ah! Rox, Roxas says how it's strange with them seeing each other the way they remember each other. Um, they continue that they thought nobodies were doomed to fade to the darkness, but as long as Sora and Kyrie are together, they'll always be together. Oh. Nomine fades into Kyrie, and Roxas fades into Sora, and now we need a <laughs> fuck. We need a brief explanation about the Kyrie Sora. Oh my god. Okay, so because this also explains why Namine has the power to mess with Sora's memories. Right. Okay. Hit us. Deep breath. You got this. Namine is half Kyrie's nobody. Okay, explain. And she's half Sora's nobody. Okay, explain. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, wait, hold on, yeah. No, that's no, right, because yeah. was 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 Roxon not what not a hundred percent so was nobody. But how was there another fifty percent nobody to go over? So <laughs> So Okay, let's So Yeah, let's let's hear about So <laughs> Dear God <laughs> Ky a nobody is created when a heart leaves a body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the body behind leaves a husk. They pass through each other. So Kyrie's heart mm. left her body, yeah. but because Kyrie is a princess of heart, mm. her body can't become a nobody, and her heart because the nobody is only created if a heartless is also created. Because Kyrie can't create a heartless, 
She can't create a nobody. Okay. But her heart went into Sorozel's. And Sorozel's, remember, did a seppuku. Yeah. Where he created Roxas. And also simultaneously created Nomine. Why? Out of his body and her heart. Oh, Wait. Man. Okay, so when, because when he, yeah, no, fair, yeah, okay, I, I think I'm getting this, but when he killed himself, he released two hearts, he released his heart and Kyrie's heart, so he had two hearts to transform into a nobody, but the hearts weren't, in, uh, Kyrie's well, heart wasn't in her, so she, well, the princess shit wasn't working, basically. What? I think I've understood this, but you've explained no, no, it better. No, no. He, 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 he... She can't have a body made of her, because right. she is a pure heart princess, whatever, Yeah. but her heart was still stabbed, which meant it was a nobody was created... And to, to, Wait, to be clear, hear so the important, the important different, yeah. the important differentiation is that because when when she left her body, no heartless was created. Right. But when her heart left Sora's body, a heartless was created, meaning that there was an empty husk left behind. Right. This empty husk, of course, became Roxas. Right. Remember how they keep saying that her and Roxas shouldn't exist? Yeah. That's because there was no more body for a nominee to be made of. So nominee, nominee this entire time has never had a body. But She's she, kind of been a, a, a semi-ghost that has been floating about this whole time with no body. But she's held objects in her hands. She does not We've have, seen her draw. Don't, don't question it. She doesn't have a body. That doesn't mean she can't be tangible. Ghosts can hold things. You've seen force ghosts. Um, and also, but remember, pick things up. Oh yeah, okay. Remember yes, sure. that Roxas is very much the same mm -hmm. because Sora still has his body simultaneously. Because of course, ten minutes after he became a heartless, yeah. Kyrie gave him a nice warm hug and brought his body back. But Roxas was still there, so Roxas also doesn't actually have a body. So. <laughs> Right. We have Roxas made of Sora's heart and Sora's body, but he lost Sora's body, so he's just kind of a floating thing um, that so, shouldn't exist. No. Same with Nomine, and that's also why Nomine, because she's created from Sora's body, is able to control Sora's memories. So back when, back in December, when I was working on the King, uh, the first ten minutes videos for <laughs> Kingdom Hearts one, two, and three, yes. and I was replaying the games. Uh, bits of the games. I didn't play the whole thing. Um, and I was going into forums to check my own lore knowledge, which is obviously wrong. And I saw somebody make a comment, and it was an interesting comment. It stood out to me because it was essentially on the lines of saying, Kingdom Hearts is not complicated. A child could understand it. In fact, the whole entire series has been designed so that a child could understand it. People just complain because it's presented in a convoluted way. Now, I, I would like to... After t after he after 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 hearing your explanation of this combination, I would like to kindly tell that person <laughs> to go fuck themselves. Um, I am happy to just go on the rest of my life understanding that I will never fully understand now, this, I and I'm happy with that will fact. Say that that explanation is a retcon. But it's worse then. Because in the original People game, say No More is good, man. I'd still... I'd be, no More is a After the end of this lore dump, I feel like, if anything, I'm going to hate No More more than I did before. Uh, no but time for him. But you're still going to buy Final Fantasy Remake. I love Final Fantasy Remake Part 1. I don't know what it is. I feel like he didn't write that. He uh, did write it. I know, I know he did. I know he directed it and all that sort of shit. I feel like someone else must have been, to like, be over fair. his shoulder. Oh, okay. With that mess behind us. Love. Wrote that into the script. I knew it was, was going to devolve. Um, <laughs> Kyrie gets through the portal to escape, but then it closes, of course, leaving Riku and Sora behind as the Dragon Castle mech comes back, looking even more dragon form now. So hop onto a flying motorcycle that Riku finds wow. and fly away into the sky to fight sure. Zephyrus. You're always leaving those around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the ending of this game is such a trip. He, he throws skyscrapers at you and you need to hit them back with your keyblade. Oh, yes. Oh it's yeah. it's great. Um, <laughs> finally, in a weird plane between realms, Xemnas is back in his normal body, but now absolutely dripped out in this uh, this sick black and white coat. Uh, he's, he's been in various, but mainly his black coat up to this point. Um, 
and you beat him down with the most iconic duel, Riku and Sora together versus Zemnis. You keep doing all these sick swirly Keyblade moves. And there's a part where you're in like a big laser light dome. His lasers are shooting down from the sky. Um, and you just knock this bitch out for good. Zemnis is dead. Another one to add to the tally. Another this one is, to add to the tally. This is cool to see. Got to see. Oh, like, yeah. seeing the back oh. together is very, very satisfying. This and the Riku fight are the two fights I want to show you because they are just the coolest fights. Um, So, with Zemnis dead, Sora and Riku find an exit from the realm between and end up at... Hey! It's the Dark Meridian again. Oh, They discuss how they've been touched by the darkness and how... Now that uh, Zemnis is gone, the realm of light is safe. And they should retire and stay in the realm of darkness. Realm of light doesn't need them anymore. Wait, what? The two of them just exhausted. They're just like, they're, let's they're just... Done. Okay. They've gone through so much. They're like 15. They're just tired, man. I feel the same way, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they sit down at the water's edge, remembering the sound of the waves, just like when they were back home. Mm. When suddenly besides them... Kyrie's message in a bottle from before uh. washes up. <laughs> and I almost half want to just show you the final no, three what, minutes of no, the game. No, what happens? Um, there are people listening to this on well, Spotify, tell us. He's so annoyed, he's so angry. I'm not watching this, I've watched it before, because I remember. Because final cinematic time, the music swells as Sora picks up the letter, which of course I will recite yeah. it, it, verbatim. Thinking of you, wherever you are, we pray for our sorrows to end and pray that our hearts will blend. Now, I will step forward to realize this wish, and who knows? Starting a new journey might not be so hard, or maybe it's already begun. There are so many worlds, but they share the same sky. One sky, one destiny. A light opens in the distance, and it's the door to light. Sora takes Rika's hand, and they return together to the realm of light, Falling from the sky as shooting stars into the ocean. Rising from the ocean, they hear Kyrie's voice, and at long last, they look at a familiar beach. They're home. Oh. And I cried writing the screen of the script. Oh. And I'm welling up now. You guys, it's great. Also, Donald, Goofy, and the king are here for some reason. Oh, they all hug in the credits roll. Hey. Hey, you and I. We did it. We did it. We got through Kingdom Hearts 2. But. No, 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 credit roll. Post credit scene! Oh. <laughs> God, okay. <laughs> Riku and Sora are chilling on Destiny Islands a time Yay. later. Okay. They're finally relaxing, f having some peace. They reminisce on how much bigger the world is than just their island and question, you know, what the door to light was that brought them home. And it was the light in their hearts this whole time leading them home. Kairi runs up to them with a bottle. Nope. In the bottle is a letter with the emblem of that goddamn rat. Does every game Music end? swells as our trio looks at the letter, because you know this shit ain't done. Next adventure! <laughs> they at least had some time here to, to chill. Yeah, we talked in like six we, months. Yeah, we assume they've had uh, some downtime here. Okay. Um, as they... So what we've, what we've learned is the only way to overcome the darkness is to believe in a thing called love. Or just embrace the d darkness and the depression and make that part of your soul. Um, so, <laughs> now, oh, and I know me. that you're going to love this. Nothing. Nothing. Our sweet boy is back with his delicious reports. I see only three this time. There's the number three here. That's just three. three pages for that one. Uh, but don't worry, I've summarized them greatly. And can I clarify, uh, from The Apprentice or from Ansem? This one is from Ansem the Wise, a.k.a. Diz. Cool. And it tells... OG Ansem. An cool. Yeah. So... One, Ansem tells how his world has become the Paradise Radiant Gardens, but he must solve the darkness of the heart to protect it. His apprentice, Xehanort, volunteers to be a test subject. Ansem found Xehanort at death doors year ago, years ago with no memory, and he f showed superhuman talent and intellect. Ansem and another of his apprentices named Evan are curious about Xehanort's memory and feel that probing his heart will allow them to answer them. That'll be Zevin that we met earlier. <laughs> well, yeah, I was thinking, like, <laughs> Zemnis? I keep going back to Zemnis, but I know that Ansem is the name. Um, Ansem repeals that his youngest apprentice, Ienzo, constructed a massive laboratory in the basement of the castle where his six apprentices have been doing dangerous human experiments, plunging into the depths of their hearts. Ansem forbids them from continuing and tells them to destroy their research, 
regretting suggesting it in the first place. On Mickey's advice, he reviews the data from the lab where he discovers that the Ansem reports from Kingdom Hearts 1. Hey. Hey. Uh, though they had his name, he wrote only the first. The rest were written by Xehanort. Ah, thank you. Okay. Um, Three. He reveals that Xehanort and his five other apprentices, Evan, Ienzo, Bragg, Dylan, and Alias, mm-hmm. were transformed into the darkness during their experiments and are no longer human. Ansem has been banished from his realm, trapped in a realm of nothingness. Here he discards the stolen name Ansem, taking the name Diz, meaning darkness in zero. Or darkness in the midst of nothing. Darkness in zero. And begins his quest for revenge. <laughs> you look like you've aged five years. <laughs> Four. I have, I have. Diz details how he's losing himself to hatred trapped in the realm uh, of nothingness. He chronicles his thoughts about what happens to the soul and body when the heart is lost. Five. Diz believes that the heartless are the key. He tells how his apprentices in the lab are not only creating pure blood heartnesses from the dark hearts, but also creating the emblem heartlesses, artificial ones. He postulates that Xehanort likely threw away his hearts to become a heartless, and is using them to search for the heart of the world. Is the realm of nothingness the same as the realm of darkness? They are different things. I'm going to be 100% honest. It's not fully explained. Okay. They because... just say he's he's banished to a realm. Okay. Assumedly, it's the realm of darkness. Well, because if it is, the realm of darkness seems to lead to someone being filled with hatred. And again, I need to test- testify the fact that darkness does not seem to be a good force in this world yet, or 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 a positive force in any sense. If that's what it does to somebody when they're there, you, now you could argue that as a reflection of Diz as a person who clearly has a lot of fucked up shit going on in his brain. But like, it's something uh... to note. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I think that he's in the dark realm. I think okay. by the way that he talks. Anyhow, D, uh, six. Diz gains the power of darkness after spending so long befriending it. The power allows him to utilize the corridors of darkness to escape the realm. Cool. He used the darkness to change form into the Mummy Man and confirmed his suspicion that Xehanort became a heartless and stole his name. Into the Mummy Man. <laughs> into yeah, the yeah, Mummy sure. Man. Yeah, okay. He wonders where the rest of his apprentices went. Did they become heartless or something else entirely? Seven, Diz finds and hides himself away in Twilight Town in the mansion. Here he confirms the existence of nobodies and goes on to tell how, while most lose their form, those of strong hearts are able to retain it. His prior apprentices fell into such the category and have formed the core of the new organization, Organization 13. Great. They are numbers yeah. one through six. But I guess his... the important thing is that the majority or, or a good chunk of Organization 13 have come from as they were They were as apprentices. Yes. Yeah. Right, right, right. Exactly. We don't know which one was... The, oh no, we know that Xehanort wasn't part of Organization so 13, though, so he's doing ones, something else. The ones that came from were Zaldin, Lexius, uh, Evan, Axel, Syx, oh, and Vexen. That was my surprise. So Axel was one of his apprentices yes. that participated in the shady shit yes well that's, that's just just well we don't we don't, we, we don't well, know exactly yeah because we don't know they sacrifice children and stuff well, but no, like no, he no, was no. part yeah, of the, he the was, research he was a research assistant who might have been fucking i don't know like writing up papers and he was asked to be experimented on like, yeah. Um, yeah um okay so um Diz sets off for castle living to learn more Eight, he details how Castle Bolivian is comprised of 13 floors and 12 basements, and the organization has been conducting memory experiments there. A girl named Nominee appears to be at the center of the experiments. Nine, Nominee is a nobody created when a young girl's heart left her body, but there's no corresponding heart because that girl is a princess. Kyrie, a resident of Radiant Garden, gasp, um, had no oh. in her heart. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Wait. Wait, sorry, Ky- Kyrie's from Hollow Bastion before it became Hollow Bastion. Yes. She was, she she was, was born there. The yes. Oh, yeah, because really she, she, she came moved. to Destiny. Yeah, yeah, she came yeah. to Destiny Island later. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, cool, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Don't ask how she traversed worlds. It is never explained. That's fine. Yeah, fuck it. She got in a gummy <laughs> ship. It's fine. She somehow moved in a gummy ship, I guess. She's a Anyhow, pilot. maybe it will be explained one day. It Probably, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Anyhow. Um... Kyrie had no light in her heart, causing her body to remain in the realm of light. Because of this, Nominee doesn't actually have a body and is thus unstable. Because of this, she also lacks Kyrie's memories. Technically, because of this, she isn't actually a nobody. 10. Diz persuades Nominee to sleep, to keep Sora in twi- Twilight Town while he sleeps. So this is why the pod is in Twilight Town, is because Diz is like, yo, I have a lab there. Let's put him in my lab. Right. Um, he says how Nominee is special and was created when Sora poked himself in the tummy. And then Riku arrives. Cool. Eleven! Diz reunites with Mickey, but does not disclose his identity, of course he looks like the Mummy Man, to keep Mickey from stopping his revenge. He speaks about how both Twilight Town and Traverse Town sit between light and darkness, with the former being comprised of the remnants of worlds whose hearts had been stolen. 
These world, uh, these between worlds are unstable with corridors to darkness appearing at random, such as those transporting those who lost their world, like Sora. Diz tasks Riku with getting Roxas. Well, apart from nominated Roxas, nobody's retained their memories from their time as humans. Nominate does not have hers due to not having Iris' body and soul, and Roxas doesn't have Sora's due to how short a time Sora was a heartless. Diz doesn't feel Twilight Town is safe, as this is where Roxas awoke as a nobody and was recruited by the organization. As, as such, he creates a day in Twilight Town in which to hide Roxas. 13. How did Xehanort manage to open the door in the basement of the Radiant Gardens castle so long ago? Oh, is it just a question it's there? Just a question. Interesting. Okay. okay. Cool. Now we are truly well and done. We finished Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2. Yay! We did it. Um, yeah. Do we want, because it's so short, do we want to just tack co- the like 10 bullet points of coded onto this mm-hmm. one? So, Kingdom Hearts coded or recoded. Um, Why is it re? Because it was remade. So, oh. so what did it originally come out on? Uh, or actually, now that I think about it, looking at the, the image here of the DS cover, it was re there. So if I'm honest... Not a not a clue. Cool. No clue why it's re. No problem. Sorry, Neil. What was your question? No, it, that was it. That was the question. What what did it originally come out? Oh on? But yeah. I assume it was DS then. This this was this was the first DS game I believe for uh, Kingdom Hearts. Mm. It's okay. It's it's okay. It is my and most people's least favorite one. It's a huh. weird black sheep in the franchise because Monty's probably gonna love it not much happens (laughs) to the point where I have less than a page of notes on the entire game thank god (laughs) (laughs) in fact I'm pretty sure half of that specifically is the post credit scenes I think I have five bullet points in the game itself (laughs) How long, how long is the game to complete on DS do you Um, remember roughly I think it's like a 20 hour game it's not massively long yeah. Um, 15, 20 hours, you could probably do it faster, to be honest. Cool. Um, and, like, gameplay-wise, it's it's your open worlds, it's your... Yeah. I'll be 100% honest, I've not played it. Okay! Um, <laughs> cool, totally I'm fine. Gonna, I'm gonna be honest, it's the one game in the franchise I've not played. Pretty much the entire game only rehashes things we already know, things we will learn... And then everything new just gets retconned. Oh, God. Okay, cool. Like, this game just gets retconned out of existence by the time you get to three. Cool. So. Cool. Anyhow. (laughs) Plot. (laughs) We start off in Disney Castle, where Jiminy, good old cricket buddy, gets a message that his journal is filled with data bugs. Oh, oh no. no! What do they look like? Like little actual insects? No, like 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 bu- like code bugs. But I thought he's bugs writing. A, he's writing on paper there. <laughs> well, well, see, see, remember how in Chain of Memories when they were in the thing, and there he's like, my journal's gone. Yeah. It's because yeah. somehow Nominate could mess with his journal as it for a memory, quote unquote. Right. I guess it's like when the memories were being deleted or moved from their heart. It also because like it affected other people it also affected the journal i suppose like the evidence i guess but i thought nominee's powers are magical not data-based well well, well, well this well, is well, this well, is well, different um okay sorry i may have jumped ahead a tad okay essentially there's some weird wacky shit going on with jiminy's journal yep. after it was put back together by nominee <clears throat> um so king mickey creates a data world out of the journal and he creates a data Sora and says, "Data Sora, go kill the 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 code bugs." Is that, is that a data Sora's Rex? Oh, oh yeah, you know it is. Get out. <laughs> um, uh, to to very simplify the key points, you do a shit ton of shit. There's data bugs instead of heartless. Oh shit, Data Riku is the embodiment of Jiminy's journal, and then you clean up the journal. But no, you didn't because suddenly there's Data Castle Oblivion, and you go and you calm down Data Roxas. Um, and you, wait, hold on. on. You you calm down Data Roxas. Calm down Data Roxas, who was in there. He was he was he was being a grumpy old boy. Does he know that he's a nobody and Sora's well, like he, all this shit? He's a Data. They're all a Data. So it doesn't. Not, it's not it real, doesn't it's matter. Not, it's not real Roxas. Then. None of it's real. Okay. It doesn't matter. Oh, how unsatisfying. Down, <laughs> you calm down, grumpy Data. I re- I feel like we're gonna get somebody in the comments going. Coded's the most important one in the franchise. No, you know what. Fuck you. <laughs> um, I apologize to that one person, but, you know. Um, so, 
you, you, you calm down, Data Roxas, and oh shit, it was Data Nominee who sent the original message. Oh, so she's oh, a different nominee from normal nominee. I guess she is. We've got two nominees. Sure. Two um, minutes. Just, and just keep, was... keep, it, keep in mind, this is all getting retconned. Well, We're all she... right. It's all getting retconned. <laughs> Too many nominees. <laughs> While she was fixing up old Sora Boy's memories, she found hurt memories in him that didn't belong to him. Oh. That's actually... Semi relevant. Okay. Um, Whose memories are they? This is this is where we're getting to things that right. actually matter now that we're at the very end of the game. Cool. So. Oh, this is the end. We jumped right ahead. Yeah. Cool. This is the very end, like last five minutes of the game. Thank God. Yeah. Um, keep going. Already the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, and basically, while well, Nominee was putting back together Sora's memories, she found uh, these these real pained memories. But they don't belong to him. Uh, but rather, there's somebody whose heart's connected to him, and she kind of just wanted Diary. Sora to know. So Sora has connected with a lot of people's hearts. We've got exactly. Roxas and Kyrie specifically. Yeah. So for some reason, he has somebody else's pained memories in his heart, and all we know is it's somebody connected to him. Presumably, normal Sora does not have any of the memories of Data Sora. He doesn't know that he's gone off on his wee Data adventure. No. Okay. Cool. I, I think they might tell him later, but uh, no. Wait, what happens to Data Sora at the end of this? Does he just oh, get he, deleted? He gets deleted. Fucking yeah. Hell. Bye, Data Sora. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. So, yeah, uh, she just wanted uh, sort of know that... Um, Sorry, I'm just imagining, like, poor Roxas in the real world. And then you've got an even sadder Data Roxas who exists for about five minutes. He's sad being a little Data nobody. And then him and his, like, host get deleted. <laughs> so bleak. Surely yeah. you could... Wait, that's so sad. That's so shit on King Mickey, though. Because presumably, based on the technology we've seen so far, there must be some way to yeah. upload Data Roxas yeah. into a replica body that we've seen can be created so we ha we could bring Roxas back to life. And King Mickey sits there and goes yeah, no, fuck that. Delete also, we know that shit. real people can travel to the data realms so why not just send real Sora in to, to fix it? Yeah, because, because real yeah. Sora, because he's letting real Sora finally relax after defeating Zemdes. Fuck that, there's stuff to do. He's letting, <laughs> he's letting real Sora finally have a okay. fucking nap on the beach with his friends who he's been lost for Why doesn't years? Mickey get in there then? Yeah, do something Mickey, you <laughs> prick. Because, because it's... <laughs> Sora's memories, I guess. Okay. Uh, I don't All know, right. man. Okay. Okay. Also, yeah, sure. don't talk about Data Roxas in a replica body. We'll get to that. Anyhow! Oh, yes. I nailed it. Okay, um, cool. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyhow, after all this is done, Mickey writes a letter to Sora telling him that the memories from the past are sleeping in him. These memories are important to his future. Sora goes to meet up. Uh, Sora needs to meet. come meet up so they can come save the other hearts that are hurting. And that's the letter that we got at the end of King of Hearts 2. Oh, so after all of this, Mickey's like, fuck this, we need Sora. Yeah. Okay. So basically in the gap between the end of KH2 and them getting that letter in the post credit scene, that is when Coded takes place. And, nope. Mick, and then Mickey writes this letter. He's like, come here. We got to go fix your heart. It's filled with shit. And then you go, and that's the end of Coded. Hooray! But we got oh, some, yeah, yeah, we got yeah, some yeah. post credit scenes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and these are the actually important things in the game. Okay. I want to know what Chip and Dale are up to, frankly. Yeah, these guys seem to be hopping um, about on the screen, but uh, I think that they created the data world. Cool. Maybe they're quite smart for a couple of chipmunks. They yeah. make they make the gummy ships. They're they're they made the matrix. They're engineers. Yeah. yeah, I think they were the ones who made the data world. Maybe. Um, honestly, I don't remember, and it doesn't really matter. Cool. So, yeah, fine. Um, only thing that matters, Sora has shit going on in his heart. Gotta go find it. Great. Okay, post credit scenes that actually matter. Cool. So, following all this, Mickey goes to meet with Yen Sid in his tower to discuss how he's close to figuring out who Ven, where Ven's heart is. Yen Sid, yeah. who says that that only leaves Terra. Mickey's like, we gotta save all three of them. Who's the third? Sora. I don't know, man. Who is the third? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yen Sid uh, then questions what Xehanort plans to do next. We've heard of him before. He was he's the apprentice who turned into yeah, Ansem yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Zem and oh. Zemnes. Because guess what? If you kill the respective heartless and a nobody of somebody, they kind of shloop back together and the real person's back. What? Yeah. Wait. What? Apprentice Xehanort's back, buddies! So, so, so does does anyone die in this universe? <laughs> yes, you can naturally die. What, and from old age? Yeah. Okay. You can naturally die, or from like... So, illness, so, but... so if I, if I, if I kill you, God mm -hmm. forbid we get to that point, Chase. Yeah. 
If I kill you, we're halfway through, Neil. You're, you're, you are a strong-hearted individual. I well, know you will. If you killed, if you, if you killed you me, would... I would assume it would be a knife for your hands. I would just die because the only thing that would free my heart in death is either a keyblade or a heartless. Right. Okay. Normal okay. weapons do not free your heart. So Zaynor, uh, we don't know if he's back currently, but he is on his way back. And he's a bad bloke. Ah. Uh, I mean, he kills children. Yeah. And both of his other halves that we've met are just the worst cunts. Right, so I was thinking about this. I think that Organization 13 gets a bit of a bad rap. I mean, because they're. Wrong. Yeah, I was they're, thinking about that. Like, obviously, their leader is evil. But, the but rest, is he? Yes. Why? What's he done? He seen through evil shit at the end of the last game. He's like wa- what? He's waging war. He's been. He's to be fair, the only people he's really trying to kill are heartless. Yeah, and heartless don't have. Like... Well, him aside, even the the objectives of most of. I mean, they do all take their turns trying to kill a child, but <laughs> taken who then murders them. But the, you you are right. The only thing their motivation is just trying to get a heart. Really, yeah, isn't just it? to be 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 f- a full person. You know, have yeah. have an emotion and stuff. So like, what's organization of thirteen or fight? I feel like we should be helping organization thirteen at this point. I mean, what's the what is the what 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 bad thing happens if Zem this at the end of Kingdom Hearts two actually achieves his goal? Thirteen people or the ones that are surviving after well, Sora killed them to fair, get to because then become they have whole. Kingdom. Well, do we know that Kingdom Hearts gives them hearts, or did they just say that? Well, that was do their plan. Do we want plan. to leave them with... That was their plan, but do we want to leave them with just the single most powerful source of energy in the universe? And ni how? Um, so, Yen Sid's like, ah, uh, that Xehanort guy, he's pretty, he's pretty smart and handsome, and he probably planned backup plans in case Ansem and Xamnas were defeated. And honestly, uh, given what Yen Sid's saying, he's probably worse than the, than the former two. Okay. So, uh, good job, Sora. We did it. <laughs> you did great. <laughs> you did great. Um, and he says that Sora and Riku are going to need to be ready, but they're not true Keyblade masters like Mickey is. Mickey's a Keyblade master. They're just Keyblade wielders, and they're self-taught at that. Cool, cool. So it's like a um, hierarchy of Keyblade people. Whereas um, Mickey was officially trained to be a Keyblade master, um, which I don't actually think has ever been mentioned um, that you don't have to tell us if it comes up later. Do you know who trained Mickey? Yeah, I don't really think it's a spoiler, though, because it's pretty obvious it at this Yen point. Sid. It was Yen Sid. So Why does Yen Sid know how to use so a keyblade? Yen Sid yeah. is the vague spoilers for the first five minutes of Birth by Sleep. Yen Sid used to be a keyblade master. Right, okay. But he revoked the title and now just kind of keeps watch over the world. So he doesn't have a keyblade on his person. He couldn't jump. He has a physical keyblade. He has just revoked the title of master. Right. Um. So he can still summon a keyblade if he so chooses. Right. He has the ability. Great. Uh, but Sora and Riku, self-taught, not true keyblade masters. And yet Sid's like, Mickey, would y'all have survived any of this prior shit if you had to face, say, Ansem and Xemnas at the same time? If you had to face more than one Xehanort. Right. And Mickey's like, oh no. And Yen Sid's like, get those boys. They got to demonstrate to me a mark of mastery. What does that mean? It's the mark of mastery. What does that do? It's the mark of mastery. <laughs> we'll find out. Okay. It's the mark of mastery. Sure. First post credit scene over. Second post credit scene, we see Zigbar. Which one's Zigbar? Oh, Zigbar's I, thought, I thought Zigbar died. Yeah. Well. Well, 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 well. Sigbar has Zigbar's, the, the not, purple yeah, spiky the purple things. Yeah. Well, he's not in his organization robes. He's in like normal clothes. Okay. Just Zigbar in the jeans yeah. and a t-shirt. <laughs> must be, yeah, must, must be nice much. to get out of that and, he, and he's yeah. chilling at Ansem's computer in Radiant Garden. Why? I don't know, man. And behind him, him and a bunch of people, behind him there's a bunch of people dead on the floor. Oh. And it's all the rest of the apprentices who used to be in the organization. But then died. And they're all in normal clothes. Some of them are in lab coats. Some of them are in, like, okay. black suits. Okay. Is this a flashback? Who knows? <laughs> That's not helpful. Zigbar <laughs> uh, Zig- says Maybe. how Zemnis isn't here, so the party must have begun. Before going on to say how that Xehanort scares me. So Zigbar is also scared of Xehanort. Uh, it would seem so. Okay. So, uh, which also infers that Zigbar knows Xehanort. Um, so, you know, um, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm sick of all their names. Zigbar, <laughs> Zeno, Zappity-Doo. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I lose track. I really do lose track. 
oh, I, I was meaning to print out a, a photo of all the organization members with their names. <laughs> like you just point to them when yeah. you need to. Like a, a whole <laughs> cheat sheet. So he continues on that no one knows what the old man wants and asks uh, this elusive figure who's standing behind him if he even knows what's going on in his own head. Does and the elusive can... figure speak? Do we hear, do we know who that oh, is? We're, no. We're, we're, we're getting there. The oh, camera okay. zooms out and it's young Xehanort. Oh shit, he's back. So he's okay. back, and this is this is him combined as a full person again. Yeah. yeah. So Xehanort says how every Keyblade wielder has a Keyblade of their own, uh, which fully just smashes the idea that Sora's a chosen one and there's like a single Keyblade. Yeah. He's like, there's Keyblade wielders everywhere. Okay. It's a whole thing. Everybody has their own Keyblade. Keyblades aren't special. How many Keyblade wielders do we have right now at this point that we know of? Riku, and so three. Ricky. Three current wielders, two, no, four current wielders, including Xehanort, two um, potentials with Kyrie and Yensen. Okay. So over time, more and more Keyblades were forged to be handed down. But of all the Keyblades in existence, Master Xehanort's is the most ancient. I can't imagine how hard Donald's taking all this, seeing everyone else getting keys around him. Zigbar, <laughs> <laughs> nah. that's great because there's a scene later that deals with that exact. Thing. God damn you! There's <laughs> a scene in three that deals with that. Fuck's sake! And then Zigbar asks if this is all connected to the ancient Keyblade War. Oh oh oh! Eh, but does continues. He doesn't really care because he has his own plans. He then asks, "What poor soul will it be making Zaynort laugh?" Ha 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 ha. What poor soul will it be for what? Who knows, man? Who knows? Conan's over. It's a tease. We're done with it. It's we're done? We're done. Hey, Conan's hey, over. Hey, okay. Conan's hey, over. Hey, hey. <laughs> um, is that a sensible place for us to stop here? That's a sensible place for us to stop here. Thanks for listening. Um, we will be continuing with part... Three? Part three. What part is this? This We've just done four. parts of the one coming up. No, we? so Kingdom Hearts 1 was part 1. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, Chain of Memories is part, part 2. two. Kingdom Hearts 2 is part 3, so the next one is going to be part 4. Yes. My god. Okay, we're going to be coming back with part 4, where we're going to be covering... Uh, what's what's the next game? Next up, Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. That's going to be the next episode. The link will be below, and uh, thanks for listening. Love Thank you all. You.